Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. The Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network proud to present non-conference baseball Tuesday fun here on Fox as the Lynchburg Hornets will host the Methodist Monarchs. Lynchburg coming in at 12 and 6 on the year. They are the 21st ranked team in the country and they will host Methodist from Fayetteville, North Carolina, 12 and 10 on the year. The Monarchs with one of the all-time legendary head coaches, Mr. Tom Austin. We'll talk about Coach Austin. We'll talk about the rest of this Monarch squad. We'll tell you what Lynchburg's been up to. A doubleheader sweep on Sunday against Washington and Lee. Two very close wins there for Lynchburg. But now the Hornets have won six of their last seven. Lynchburg's won eight of their last ten. And they seem to be playing pretty good baseball. They've got some impressive individual performances as of late. We're excited to tell you more about those guys and see some great baseball here overcast skies on a tuesday afternoon but we've got a very nice day to play and we are glad you are watching it on lhsn national anthem coming up and we're back with the lineups in the first pitch baseball on the way next stand by think a private education is too expensive think again at the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. Welcome back, baseball fans. You're looking live at Fox Field in Lynchburg. It's the Hornets going to be in the home white on white there with the black hat, red trim, hosting the Methodist 
Monarchs. And we are so excited to have you along for the ride here on LHSN. Let's tell you the starting pitcher for Lynchburg. It'll be number two, Josh Jorman. We did see Jorman for a short appearance on Sunday in the doubleheader against Washington and Lee. We'll run down the recent numbers from Jorman here in just a minute. The battery mate catching today will be Riley O'Donovan, number 19. Going around the diamond at first base, it'll be Ryan Long playing first. You'll have Ben Jones at second. The Batman and Robin combo. High school teammates, Ben Jones at second and the shortstop Brandon Garcia. Gavin Collins playing third base. That's a pretty similar infield construction for Lynchburg. In the outfield, we have Eddie Gimbel getting the start in left. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth, will be in center. And Quinn Madden is in right. Lynchburg 12 and 6, 6 and 3 at Fox this year. They've won three straight. And of course, Lynchburg is coached by Travis Beasley. The other side, the Methodist Monarchs, they come in at 12 and 10. The leadoff hitter will be Jackson Deal, followed up by Hunter Number Holman. Eight, Banks eight, Hartman Jackson hits Hill. third. Caleb Rogers, the shortstop, cleaning up. Brandon Mauger is the second baseman, hitting fifth. In the sixth spot, it'll be number six, Banks Engel. Caleb Green is hitting seventh. Tristan Melvin, eighth. And the freshman rounding out the batting order is Austin Rinzel, the center fielder. Interesting, it's only juniors and freshmen in the starting lineup here for Methodist today. The pitcher, Jackson Kuhn, is a sophomore. We'll get to him in just a minute. We've got one pitch and one base hit as Jackson Deal scoots one through the infield. Brandon Garcia gave a valiant effort with the dive but could not get there, and it's a base runner on early against Josh Jorman. Methodist, I said 12 and 10, coached by the legendary Tom Austin in his 45th season. Yes, 45 seasons for Tom Austin. He started at Methodist in 1980. Here's a bunt. That ball is foul. Hunter Holman, the catcher, doing the bunting there, and he'll have to come back with an 0-1 count. Uh, Tom Austin, his team's always feature the bunt prominently, loves the small ball, loves the running game, loves to hit and run, loves to squeeze, all sorts of different squeeze combinations and varieties that Methodist has been known for. But they are usually a disciplined ball club that is not going to make a ton of mistakes. And every now and then they've got just some pure hitters with power and guys that can leave the yard and do damage that way. Not many home runs this year yet for Methodist, just four as a team. Compare that to 22 for Lynchburg. So it could be more of a small ball package here today for Methodist, who's in the yellow on yellow. Methodist with the green and yellow color scheme there, Oakland A's-ish, and of course there's several other teams that go with that green and yellow. But Methodist, the yellow on yellow today, and it's a bold look. They've got the white helmets to go along with that. Jormand, a couple throws over to take a peek at the runner. Long hold delivers. That ball's upstairs. And it is ball one to Hunter Holman. He's a junior from Tampa, Florida. He comes in with a five-game hitting streak. Hits safely in 11 of his last 12. When Lynchburg gets up to bat, we'll tell you about some impressive hit streaks that they have going on. Several players on the team with long hitting streaks. There's some long on-base streaks for Lynchburg offensively as well. And part of the reason why they have been so successful lately has been Lynchburg's offense. They're hitting 302 as a team now. It was 292 before the Virginia Wesleyan game. So it's over 300 just in the last three games as Jorman will throw over again. And remember, Lynchburg threw nine games or just shy of, of the 20 games that they've played, a halfway mark of those 20 games. But through nine games, Lynchburg was hitting 226 as a team. Jorman has hit Hunter Holman, and now it's the first two base runners on for Methodist. Not to start Josh Jorman would have been looking for. Lynchburg is in action tomorrow on the road. ODAC competition against Hampton Sydney. So you got to be careful with your pitching today if you're Lynchburg. Methodist, by the way, is not in action again until this weekend. They will host Mary Baldwin for three conference games. So they might be having a little bit more freedom with their pitching program. Whereas Lynchburg, you got to think about tomorrow. If you use somebody today and you want to use them tomorrow, you would have to keep them at a length or a pitch count that would allow them to be able to come back tomorrow. And if Josh Jorman can take the ball deep in the game, I think that would be great. At least that's what Coach Travis Beasley said. 
Here's a bunt. Jorman pops off the mound, down the hill, catches, throws to first base. Ryan Long there to record the out. So there's a sacrifice bunt. And there you see the commitment to that bunting game for Methodist because that's your three-hole hitter, Banks Hartman. Banks Hartman is hitting over 400 on the season, I believe, fans. So if you're using him to sacrifice bunt, that tells you how important the sack bunt is. Yeah, it is. That was Banks Hartman, 446 on the season. And that's his third sacrifice bunt of the year as well. Runners now two in scoring position. Second and third here for the Methodist Monarchs. The cleanup hitter is Caleb Rogers. Caleb Rogers has had a good season so far, hitting 333, driven in 17. A good chance to pound in two more here. And there's a bunt for you again. So you're seeing it already. Methodist loves the small ball game. They love the short game. They love to put pressure on the infield. This is something that you used to see a bit more back in the day, air quotes, back in the day. But you used to see it a lot more back in the day where teams would bunt, sacrifice bunt, then they would squeeze. Maybe it's a safety squeeze or the old suicide squeeze where the runner is already going at third. You need to find a better term for that play. But it's, it's just something that you don't see quite as much in college baseball. Teams are a little bit more likely now just to sit back and bang and try to hit the extra base hits. Try to get the ball to the fence or over. But Methodist, you see, they're still very much a small ball team. 0-2 count. Slashed up the middle. Brandon Garcia will come on. Step and throw. Out is recorded, but run scores. So call it a 6-3 ground out, but an RBI for Caleb Rogers. And Methodist is on the board in the first inning. 1-0. Runner at third is Hunter Holman. This is a freshman from Florida, Brandon Mauger, the second baseman. He hits 326 on the season. Josh Jorman, low in the dirt. Good stop by Riley O'Donovan there. And back to the bunting game. If you notice the infield alignment for Lynchburg, corners are still even with the bags right now. And with two outs, typically your first and third baseman would be playing back deeper. So that shows you the respect that Lynchburg has defensively for the possibility of that bunt for Brandon Mauger. Josh Jorman on the year pitching wise coming into this game a 1-0 record with a 3.66 earned run average this will be start number five seven, seven appearances total had one out of the bullpen on Sunday. Five hopper to Brandon Garcia pretty routine there as Hollywood throws across and gets the out inning is over but Methodist strikes first Monarchs lead one nothing after the top half of the first at Fox Field. There's a look at Lynchburg's leadoff man and the reigning ODAC Player of the Week. The Old Dominion Athletic Conference Player of the Week is the sophomore Brandon Garcia. He was six for his last 11. That encompasses that Washington and Lee doubleheader and also a road win against Virginia Wesleyan on Wednesday for Lynchburg. Six for 11, five walks in there, got hit twice. He'd scored nine times, drove in five, stole three bases, and was a perfect 15 for 15 in the field. He's already actually a perfect two for two in the field today. Made a couple nice plays on ground balls in the top of that first inning. But Brandon Garcia, the leadoff man, so talented. The guy the rest of the team calls Hollywood. Sometimes we'll throw out the BG in there. But Brandon Garcia is so much fun to watch. 
with bat and glove. I mean, he just does everything to impact the game that you would want from your leadoff shortstop. And remember, he's a sophomore. I mean, this is a guy who's playing like a grizzled veteran, and he played like a grizzled veteran last season. Brandon Garcia led Lynchburg in hits last year with 63 hits. He was second on the team in walks, second on the team in runs. He hit 342 as a freshman. He had 19 multi-hit games last year. Brandon Garcia has multi-hit games in seven of his last nine games this season. Brandon Garcia has hit safely in eight of his last nine. So number seven, the sophomore from Durham, North Carolina, is really starting to get hot here in late March. And I think he's pretty excited about it. The rest of the team is as well. A classic table setter because he will take those walks. He'll get hit by a few pitches here and there as well. 1-1 one, one count for BG. That one's high upstairs. The pitcher for Methodist is sophomore Jackson Kuhn from Foxfire, North Carolina. We'll get you some numbers on this tall righty who pitches to Brandon Garcia with a 2-1 count. Kind of comes from an overhand arm slot there. Kuhn on the season. This is appearance number 10, but start number one. The ERA is a little high at 9.45. He struck out 12, walked 15. Not exactly the ratio you want there. And now it's a full count as Brandon Garcia thought he walked, but it's a full count to the leadoff hitter for Lynchburg. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth, is on deck. Here's the pitch to Garcia. He'll just turn on this one and hammer it by the second baseman. It really was not that far to the glove side of the second baseman, Mauger, but Garcia hit it so hard that he had no chance. Couldn't even dive for that ball. Okay, here comes O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth. He's the center fielder. I'll tell you the rest of the batting order for Lynchburg. Garcia, McWilliams, then Ben Jones, Eric Hyatt, Quinn Madden, Gavin Collins, Riley O'Donovan, Eddie Gimble, and Ryan Long. That's the order this time for Lynchburg. McWilliams shows a bunt, takes it back. That's ball one on what looked like a breaking ball from the right hand of Jackson Kuhn. Lynchburg six and three at home this season and 78 and 10 in the last five years here at Foxy. 78 and 10, incredible. Lynchburg has been so good in this ballpark. They have been good on the road as well, obviously. Lynchburg was 48 and 8 last year, 36 and 12 back in 2022. But the numbers at home, especially mind boggling for baseball fans. McWilliams has taken ball two. O'Kelly McWilliams has got a nice little hit streak going. Nine games straight with a base hit for IV. And he's hit safely in 12 of his last 13. Another breaking ball from Kuhn. Good eye from O'Kelly McWilliams to lay off. And now it's a hitter's count, three and one. Infield double play depth depth for Methodist. Outfield pretty much average and straight away against the right-handed hitting fifth-year man for Lynchburg. This ball skips away on an attempted pickoff. Garcia is going to cruise into second base. So that will be an error probably on the pitcher there for Methodist. That will make their legendary head coach Tom Austin happy. Brandon Garcia is in scoring position for O'Kelly McWilliams. Kuhn will look in for the sign. Now he's set and ready to go. Overcast skies here in central Virginia. Chance of rain tomorrow and Thursday, but I think we're good for today. And we'll get you a little temperature check here in just a minute. It was cold when we started on Sunday morning. It finally warmed up as we got into game two of the doubleheader. But uh, this is much better. We're, we're in the upper 50s or even 60 right now. Still flag, so not any wind out there to speak of. Full count pitch coming up to O'Kelly McWilliams. Oh, that nearly hit him. Almost got him in the helmet. So Kelly McWilliams kind of rolled with that punch like a good boxer would. It did not hit him. It's just a walk, but it's runners on first and second now for Methodist. The dangerous Ben Jones steps in. This is the guy that the director of baseball analytics, Brady Moore, he dubbed Ben Jones, Benny Basis, because he has been walking so much in his career here at Lynchburg. Another sophomore like his high school teammate at second. Benny Basis has walks in 17 of 20 starts this year. 
Strike one to the guy that we also call Benny Bombs because of his explosive power at the plate. Ben Jones, Benton Jones, actually, even the, even the official full name there. Number 21 for Lynchburg, hits with an 0-1 count, runners on first and second. First baseman behind O'Kelly McWilliams at first. Both these guys will be threats to run, Garcia and McWilliams. They're the top two stolen base men for Lynchburg this season. Who does run well? Lynchburg as a team has stolen 46. They've got 20 of those from McWilliams and 12 from Brandon Garcia. So 32 of the 46 combined. Ben Jones thought about swinging at that one, held on to it, and then took it for strike two. Kind of a weird throwback to the pitcher. It squirted out of the catcher's hand, and the pitcher, Kuhn, had to scramble over there for it. Sort of had to field that just like a true ground ball. No advance from the Lynchburg runners. Just looked kind of funny going back out to the pitcher on the ground and to his right. 1-2 delivery coming up to Ben Jones. Kuhn holds, checks Garcia, fastball up for ball two. Eric Hyatt on deck. Hyatt has been swinging a good bat lately. You really can say that about everybody in the Lynchburg lineup today. And to a degree, almost everybody on the team. The numbers have been going up for the entire Hornets squad. Two strike pitch to Ben Jones. Lifts this into right field. Long run out there at the warning track. Caught. Brandon Garcia will tag. So will El O'Kelly McWilliams. The play was at second, but McWilliams slides in head first safely in front of the tag. So just a long out for Ben Jones. He nearly got one there. All the way back to the warning track. Pretty good grab by Jackson Deal in right field for Methodist. One out and up steps Eric Hyatt riding a three game hit streak. Hyatt's got a 16 game on base streak going. It's fun to talk about those streaks. I, and I feel like it's something that pretty much everybody can understand even if you don't really get inside baseball or you're just sort of a casual fan. I think you understand when you say a guy has a, a 10 game hitting streak like Quinn Madden does who's waiting on deck. That tells you, wow, he must be Swinging it pretty good lately. He must be playing well at the moment. Breaking ball comes in for a strike to Hyatt. The count is even at one ball and one strike. So it's just a three-game hitting streak for Eric Hyatt, but he's been swinging it better and better. The junior from Woodbridge hits 283 on the season. He's a career 349 hitter. Here's the 1-1. Fastball upstairs. Hyatt never had to think about that one, and it's a 2-1 count. McWilliams at second. Garcia at third, great speed. Methodist infield defense is back. Seems like they're content just to trade a run for an out here on a potential ground ball. That one was wide right out of the hand from Kuhn. The catcher, Hunter Holman, did well to slide over there and stab that one before it got to the backstop. 3-1 count. Eric Hyatt could be all in right here. Kuhn looks like he's got great velocity. Had some troubles finding the zone. Hyatt will foul this one away. And as I say that, Coons only walked one. That was O'Kelly McWilliams who got on with the free pass. He's fallen behind and had some sort of, or a few wild misses. But, hey, it's the first inning. Coons still trying to figure it out. Road trip. Strange mound. He toes the slab and gets ready to fire the full count delivery. And now he's walked two as Eric Hyatt takes a full count walk. Hyatt second on the team in that category. Should be walk number 18 of the season for Eric Hyatt. Great stuff for the cleanup hitter for Lynchburg. 18 walks to just eight strikeouts. Wow. He and Ben Jones are similar in that they walk at a two-to-one ratio to striking out. Kuhn will step off the rubber briefly. Bases are loaded. Kuhn pitching from the windup to Quinn Madden. Check swing on a pitch low. Madden holds. And it's a 1-0 count. So I mentioned it briefly, but Quinn Madden is on a 10-game hitting streak right now. He has extra base hits in seven of his last eight. Quinn Madden swinging it over 500 in whatever stretch of games you want to look at. Last five, last seven, last 10, he's over 500. Just absolutely busting the seams off the baseball here in the last month. Quinn Madden. 
And he was our interviewee after the games Sunday. You can find that fun interview with Quinn Madden on the Lynchburg social media. It's on the YouTube page. Quinn Madden said the secret was apple juice and deer steaks. That was, the, that was his secret to being a great hitter. And then he talked about all, all the other things that make a good hitter as well, the balance and using the legs and getting good pitches to hit. It's really a great conversation. And I made the, made the joke that uh, young hitters would do well to heed his advice. And then I said, well, actually, old hitters need to think about the things Quinn Madden just said too. Pretty good stuff. Madden got under this one. Looked like a good pitch from Kuhn that chased inside. They'll call the infield fly rule, even though the second baseman is on the outfield grass. That's an automatic out. And it will be two outs now. Gavin Collins, another guy with a great hit streak going on, steps in with a chance to get some runs across for Lynchburg, who does trail 1-0. We're in the bottom of the first inning at Fox Field. It's a 1-0 Methodist lead right now. It's Gavin Collins, also with a 10-game hitting streak. He and Quinn Madden have the longest hitting streaks on the team currently, and I believe just the longest of the season in any, any stretch. Gavin Collins, multi-hit games in six of his last 10, and he's homered four times in the last seven. Gavin Collins is second on the team in homers, but pretty quickly, Kuhn has gotten ahead with two strikes. And I like this big right-handed sophomore, Jackson Kuhn. He throws it hard. Got a good breaking ball as well. Pitching from the windup with the bases loaded. Two outs, two strikes. Away target, breaking ball. Collins fights it off. Nice piece of hitting there from Gavin Collins. Breaking ball might have been a little higher than Jackson Kuhn would have wanted. Might be able to try the same thing again or perhaps setting that's setting up something else. Infield, normal depth. Outfield slightly playing Gavin Collins to pull. There's a fastball in the other batter's box. Collins lays off and it's a one-two count. Gavin Collins, 168 career hits. He's driven in 136 runners in his career. Bouncing ball, left side, could be tough. Third baseman slides over, bazooka arm across the diamond, and Methodist out of the inning unscathed. Lynchburg gets three on, but they leave three stranded, and the Monarchs lead 1-0 after one complete at Fox Field. in the dream. USA, Mexico. That was so exciting. Justin and I are officially on a break. The couple hey, canoe no, has broken up. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Banks Engel to lead off for Methodist, a junior from Hempstead, North Carolina, playing first base. And it's a 1-0 Methodist lead after one. Lynchburg stranded three. In, in most situations, I think coaches are going to say, hey, that's a great first inning, a productive first inning. We got three on, just couldn't get anybody in. If we keep doing that, things will turn in our favor. Sometimes the ball doesn't always bounce your way in this game of baseball. And I thought Jackson Kuhn, the pitcher for Methodist, really made some great pitches. He walked two 
in that inning. Looked like he might struggle a bit, but he seemed to figure it out pretty quickly. And Methodist holds on to the 1-0 lead. Josh Jorman still pitching for Lynchburg. Foul ball from Banks Angle. Caleb Green is on deck, followed by Tristan Melvin. This is 6-7-8 in the Monarch batting order. Lynchburg will send up 7-8-9. Swing and a miss from Banks Engel, and Josh Jorman has his first strikeout. Out number one in the second inning. Kyle Haney hanging out with you. We've got a great LHSN team. We are fully staffed, fully loaded, ready for a fun Tuesday. Just one game, though. I just yearn for those doubleheaders. I need more baseball. 27 outs per team is just not enough for me. I, I need even more. Josh Jorman misses the zone, falling behind. 1-0. and oh. Lynchburg is, as I said, on the road tomorrow. Taking on Hampton, Sydney. Oh, there's a ball that got into the body of Brandon Garcia on that last hop, that final hop getting to him. Just kind of came up high. And Garcia's probably going to get saddled with an error. The pickoff attempt was not an error. The, the ball that Brandon Garcia advanced to second on, we, we consulted the rule book. And Garcia's actually going to get a stolen base, but I feel sure he's going to get an out, an error right there as you get another look at it. Kind of held back, and no, he's trying to play for a hop. And it's always tough playing shortstop at any level, all the way from the little leagues on up to the big leagues. So difficult. But Brandon Garcia will be ready for the next one. The next one come might come right here. There is a 0-0 count on Tristan Melvin. Caleb Green is the runner at first. Caleb Green from Bahama, North Carolina. It's not Bahama. They pronounce it Bahama, which is interesting. We talked about those pronunciations, how sometimes that's how you can tell if somebody's from out of town or not, if they actually get the pronunciation of the town correctly. But Caleb Green from Bahama is a junior left fielder, and he's on first base right now, leading off for Methodist. Monarchs do typically like to run. Talked about the bunting game a lot, but the, the small ball, part of that is the running game as well. Caleb Green, 6 of 7 stolen base-wise this season. Methodist has the exact same number of stolen bases as Lynchburg at 46 coming into the game. But Lynchburg's actually got one extra one now. Ball two from Josh Jorman. And now it's a 2-0 count on Tristan Melvin from Cincinnati, Ohio. Another junior playing third base for the Monarchs. Nine-hole Austin Renzel is on deck. Here's the pitch from Jorman. Misses the zone again, and it's ball three. So let's get back to the schedule. Lynchburg on the road tomorrow at Hampton City. ODAC single game affair. And then the Hornets will hit the road to EMU in Harrisonburg to play the Royals for two on Saturday. Weather looks good on Saturday, so I don't think you'll have that push to Sunday deal like we've had Quite a few times, actually, already this season. But it'll be three straight road games for Lynchburg, three straight conference games. And then Lynchburg will host Randolph-Macon here at Fox next week for a single conference game. Fly ball to the right center gap that Quinn Madden will jog over and grab for out number two of the inning. Now batting number 17, Austin Renzel. Methodist takes on Mary Baldwin this weekend for a USA South Conference three-game series. And then Methodist will travel to play Roanoke next week. Methodist has played some ODAC teams, uh, including Randolph-Macon. Monarchs lost to Randolph-Macon last week, 24-6. to Kind of took it on the chin there. Methodist did take two of three from Greensboro this weekend. Some high-scoring games against the pride of Greensboro. It's a team Lynchburg has played this season. Austin Renzel swings and misses at that one. And it's an 0-1 count with two outs in the top of the second inning. Monarchs lead 1-0. Riley O'Donovan, the catcher, he'll lead off for Lynchburg in their half of the second. Snags this ball up and out and fires it back to his pitcher, Josh Jorman. One ball, one strike with two outs. Lynchburg defensively. Infield regular depth with Ryan Long holding on the runner. Outfield played slightly the opposite way. 
You can see O'Kelly McWilliams in center field in your screen. He's on that right side of Josh Jorman. That is in the opposite field. If you're playing a guy to pull, that means you're in the left center gap on that right-handed hitter. Kind of confusing sometimes if you haven't watched a lot of baseball. Here's another ground ball to Brandon Garcia. Could have gone to second, but instead fires across for the final out of the inning. And Methodist will leave one stranded. Monarchs still lead one nothing after one and a half at Fox Field in Lynchburg. Welcome back to Fox Field Baseball fans. Kyle Haney hanging out with you. Did you know it's Athletic Training Month? We salute our Lynchburg athletic trainers, including Dane Bauer, our typical uh, baseball athletic trainer. Dane has so much help, though, and the uh, entire department. We love this crew so much. Carolyn Wesley Seiler, Brittany Smith, Alexis Brown, Shay Allhype. What a team, our athletic training staff here at Lynchburg. They do so much great stuff keeping our athletes safe and healthy. And Caroline Wesley Seiler, also the Assistant Athletic Director for Student Athlete Wellness. Such an important role. She was a great athlete herself here at the University of Lynchburg. And so cool that we have all this talent around. Talent on the baseball field. Right now in the batter's box for Lynchburg, it's in the form of Riley O'Donovan. O'Donovan fouls one off. It's a 1-1 count, still facing the starter from Methodist, Jackson Kuhn. Riley O'Donovan hitting 313 on the season, three doubles, three homers. Oh, and there's a slasher back up the middle. Kuhn tried to fend it off, but O'Donovan got that by him, and it's a base hit. Leadoff man on and back-to-back -back innings for Lynchburg. And it's two base hits, both from those leadoff hitters in the inning. Here comes Eddie Gimble. The guy that the assistant coach, Cameron Lane, calls the mule. Apparently other people call Eddie Gimble the mule. And that, that's not a derogatory term. That's because he's just a hard worker and a tough guy. You never hear any complaints from him. He just says, put the load on me and I'll take it. And Eddie Gimble is a big, strong guy. I think that's part of where the nickname comes from as well. He can hurt a baseball. He could hurt Methodist right here, hitting with Riley O'Donovan on first base, 1-0 count. Here's the pitch from Kuhn, swinging a miss from Eddie Gimble. He's been the hero in a few games this season, Eddie Gimble. And he was in the game in that walk-off win that Lynchburg had against Washington and Lee on Sunday. A strange walk-off win, a walk-off walk. But, hey, it counts, right? The pitcher has to throw strikes. Gimble got jammed here, but this might end up being a tough play. It'll actually get fairly deep in the outfield, and the right fielder, Jackson Deal, comes over to make the grab. Now batting number four, Ryan Said Long. Eddie Gimble got jammed, but the ball actually carried pretty well. I've been getting fooled on that this season. The ball was carrying to right at Fox. I think maybe it just didn't, didn't sound great, didn't have that loud ping that you typically hear when a ball does carry out to the outfield like that. But Eddie Gimble already mentioned his strength right before he took the swing. So that was a factor in there as well, but it is out number one, and here's Ryan Long. Ryan Long, the senior from Virginia Beach, hitting exactly 300 on the season. On base percentages at 436 for Ryan Long. 
1 0 count with Riley O'Donovan on first. Now the count is even at one ball and one strike. Top of the order due up in just a moment. That'll be Brandon Garcia. He waits on deck for the Lynchburg Hornets. 12 and 6 on the season for Lynchburg. 6 and 3 at home. Ground ball, left side. This could be two. A little struggle getting the ball out of the glove for the first one, and then it'll kick by the first baseman. But Ryan Long can't go anywhere, so it's just a fielder's choice for Ryan Long. It will be out number two of the inning. It was the shortstop, Caleb Rogers, moving slightly to his right to catch that bounding ball, and then just couldn't seem to dig it out of his leather there to throw over. Yeah, there's another look. What a replay from the team. Not much room in foul territory between first base and the, the wall there down the right field line. So Ryan Long unable to get anywhere to second. If you're playing at a bigger park or a minor league facility, Ryan Long might have taken off. Oh, Ryan Long did get to second. Or did the ball kick out of play? Ryan Long's at second. So there's my first boo-boo of the afternoon. Maybe not even the first. But Ryan didn't take off and run, did he? What, did the ball skip out of play? Did it get stuck under the fence? And that's why Ryan Long got to second? We, we should have checked that replay even closer to figure out how Ryan Long got to second base there. He might score on this one. Brandon Garcia with his second hit of the ball game. Here comes Ryan Long around third. No play at the plate, and we are tied. So a little miscue on the double play attempt by Methodist allows Ryan Long to get into scoring position, and Brandon Garcia drives him in with his second hit of the ball game. How about it? Bang on Brandon Garcia. He's two for two. He's already the ODAC player of the week. Six for his last, his last 11, so now make him eight for his last 13. Brandon Garcia has two of Lynchburg's three hits. He'll be a threat to run here with O'Kelly McWilliams hitting with two outs. Tie ball game now, one to one. So it was an attempted double play. Methodist did get an out at second, but threw the ball away at first. And it must have been a dead ball situation where it got trapped in the fence or went through the fence out of play because Ryan Long moved to second base. Actually, while we were watching the replay of the original play, and then he scores. Next pitch, Brandon Garcia has really seen it well, isn't he? He's on a tear right now. 0-1 count for O'Kelly McWilliams. McWilliams take a hack at this one, sending it to right field. Jackson Deal moving towards the right field foul line. Makes the grab on the trot, inning over, but Lynchburg has tied it up. Brandon Garcia, second base hit of the day, drives in Ryan Long. We're knotted at one apiece here on LHSN. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was going to be more engaged than I would at a bigger campus. If someone was on the fence of coming to the University of Lynchburg, I would definitely love to sit down and have a conversation with them because I'm forever grateful that I made this choice. Um, it's definitely something that a student wouldn't regret. I, out of my four years here, I've not had one bad experience. I've had a great four years and I'm going to be very sad to go. One to one ball game through two complete at Fox Field. Hello again, baseball fans. Kyle Haney hanging out with you. What a team up in the press box. We've got Jonathan Faust on the production and direction. Faust on the ones and twos. We've got Kyle Ayers on the replays. We've got Henry Walls on a camera out there. Walls is on it as always. It's an overcast day. It really feels pretty good out there. You just wish the sun would kind of break through and make it feel like a baseball game. Here comes Jackson Deal, the leadoff hitter for Methodist. Said there was no wind earlier. Actually do see some movement with the flag now, and it does appear 
to be blowing out slightly to right field. It seemed like on Sunday the wind was blowing out to left. Now it, it truly looks like it's going to right field or the right center gap right now based on our American flag that is atop the scoreboard here at Fox Field, home of the 2023 national champions. Still don't say that enough, probably. You don't want to live in the past, but still should probably mention that just slightly more than we do. So there we go. I snuck it in there one time. It's a 1-1 count. Josh Jorman pitching to the leadoff man, Jackson Deal. Brandon Garcia coming on on the run. Nice grab by Ryan Long to elevate, pull it out of the sky, and then make the tag on the sliding Jackson Deal. You know, coaches will tell you not to slide into first base except when the first baseman comes off. Watch this replay right there. Hops from Ryan Long, and then he gets back down to tag the sliding Jackson Deal. That's just great baseball all the way around, really, because Deal sees Ryan Long jumping, so he knows, hey, if I slide, I'm going to make this play a little tougher for the first baseman. But Ryan Long, just too athletic on that one as he gets off the ground and then gets back to the dirt to make the tag. And, of course, it's helpful that they give – the first baseman, that, that big basket of a glove over there, that, that helps pull some of those in, too. And the first baseman is the only one that can use that glove. We talked about that last year. This is a ball that will not carry that far to right field. Ryan uh, Quentin Madden, rather, comes on to make this grab in shallow right. That was Hunter Holman flying out. So two quick outs here in the top of the third. Here comes Banks Hartman. He put down that sacrifice bunt. Banks Hartman is a freshman from Oak Island, North Carolina, and he is having a great start to his college career. 446 so far this season. He started 21 of 22 games for Methodist. 33 hits already. He's driven in 11. He's got a, a 2 to 1 walk to strikeout ratio. He's walked 10 times and only K'd 5. Not going to K here. PFP play as long will flip to the running Josh Jorman. And there's the third out of the inning. A pretty quick one for Jorman. Good stuff there for Lynchburg defensively. Let's see if the Hornets can take a lead. Right now we're tied up one apiece after two and a half at Fox. Tim Slusser from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping, and he mentioned caving, and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before, we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work. But it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. It was unique. It got most of us out of our comfort zone, kind of gave us a new experience, a new taste of something new. But I think the most difficult parts were getting the lighting right. Um, you had to read the instruments with the headlamps while keeping your eye pointed on the plot point. This allowed them to actually literally get their hands dirty, uh, collecting data, conducting measurements, and putting all that together in the form of a map, and doing it in a, in a place that's never been mapped before. Want to have some outdoor adventures? Fast moving day of baseball so far. We had first pitch right at 3.30. In a solo game, we get Benny Bombs up again. Ben yeah, Jones, Benny Bases, whatever you want to call him. He's so much fun to watch. Talk to this sophomore after the games on Sunday. He said, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm staying patient, but I'm staying hungry. I, I gotta, gotta bust out and get hot here at some point. You just have the feeling like Ben Jones could catch fire at any minute that one hit him yeah it looked like off the back back foot there left toe maybe of Ben Jones that can hurt but it didn't seem to bother him too much Lynchburg's had the leadoff hitter on in every inning now three of three in that department and Lynchburg did tie it up with one run in the bottom of the first uh, Ben Jones that's another way he gets on base Benny bases has now been hit five times this season it's another guy. I don't think he's really leaning in and trying to get hit, but if you throw it in his direction, he's not necessarily going to move out of the way either. Strike one on Eric Hyatt. A one count on Mr. Hyatt, who walked in his first plate appearance, still facing the starter, Jackson Kuhn. Ben Jones is a threat to run. 
He's third on the team in steals. I'm going to double check that. 0-2 count now on Eric Hyatt. Ben Jones, seven for eight this season in the stolen base department. That is good for third on the team behind Ivy and Hollywood. That's O'Kelly, McWilliams, and Brandon Garcia, respectively, if you're not plugged in to the nickname scene. Breaking ball off the plate, hit the glove. What a throw. Ben Jones is out at second trying to advance. Hunter Holman, the junior, had that ball pop out of his leather. He scrambles to it, picks it up with the bare hand, and then really rifles one. You saw the jump there from Ben Jones. I thought he made a pretty good read. He maybe thought he got around it there. Another great replay from the LHSN team. There's the, all the replays are great. It almost becomes redundant to even say that anymore, fans. But in this case, it was. Eric Hyatt gets under one. Right side of the outfield. Jackson Deal is going to make another catch, and it's another out. So Lynchburg got the leadoff runner on, but now just as quickly, there's two outs in the inning. And with that replay where our camera's angled, you can argue that we actually have a better shot at that play than the umpire in the field is going to have. And that's, that's a thing to keep in mind when you're watching sports on TV too, fans, is so, there's so many camera angles and there's only a limited number of refs. So actually, yeah, you're going to see them miss calls on TV because they're human and the camera doesn't lie and you get to watch it in slow-mo a lot of times or on the replay like we did there, whereas the umpire or referee, whatever the sport is, has to make the decision in a split second, in an instant. So, yeah, it's easy to, to see if and when calls get missed. I'm not saying a call was missed there. It was just looked really close, and Ben Jones probably thought he got around it. Judging from his reaction, looked like he thought he got around it. Give the catcher, Hunter Holman, credit for a very strong throw. 2-1 count for Quinn Madden. Looked like he went hacking for the trees on that one. Madden came up empty, and he'll have to work with a 2-2 count. There are two outs, and we're in the bottom of the third inning. Gavin Collins on deck if Lynchburg gets that far here in the third. Ball in the dirt. Madden takes it, and it's a full count. Three up, three down last inning for Methodist. Josh Jorman appears to be settling in on the bump for Lynchburg. Here's the pitch, pitch from Kuhn. Off the end of the bat from Madden. Can't get it around the left fielder, Caleb Green, and that is the third out of the inning. So not a true three up, three down. Lynchburg got the leadoff man on, but a raced on a caught stealing and then two fly outs, and all of a sudden we've reached the top of the fourth inning at Fox Field. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line in Rose. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. Leadoff man for Methodist in the top of the fourth inning is Caleb Rogers, the junior shortstop. Drove in the only run of the game so far for the Monarchs. That was on a ground out in the top of the first inning. Showing the base hit bunt, pulls it back, and it's strike one. We, in that first inning, discussed the, the small ball game, the short game, the bunting, the running, 
from Methodist. That has always been a big part of the offensive attack for head coach Tom Austin. Swung on there by Caleb Rogers. Sends it deep, but O'Kelly McWilliams is there backing up and then getting stationed to make the grab for out number one. Uh, Tom Austin, 1,275 total wins. Let me say it again, 1,275. That is the most active in the Division III level. He's in his 45th season, and he's had winning seasons 42 of the previous 44. So only two losing seasons in the last 40-plus years for Tom Austin. Incredible. You know, Lynchburg softball coach Dawn Simmons only has one losing season in her 20-plus years. Very impressive. But Tom Austin, I mean, what, what a legend. Uh, he was a very good player in his own right, a speedster. And his team does value the running game and the bunting game. That, that part of his playing career has transi transitioned over to his coaching career. 3-0 count on Brandon Mauger. Uh, Methodist. Six D3 World Series appearances. Last one was in 1996. And they actually had six D3 appearances, World Series appearances, in about an eight-year span, starting from 86 to 96. I guess that's a 10-year span, excuse me. But um, either way, they were one of the best teams in D3 baseball there in the 80s and the 90s. 24 regional appearances total for Methodist. Last one was back in 2015. So I'm sure Tom Austin would love to get back to not only the NCAA regional, but then also the final eight, the D3 World Series, at some point before his career ends. Even if he doesn't mention that, you've got to feel like that would be something that would please him very much. First pitch swing in here from, Mount, from uh, Banks Engel, and this ball is going to be down. This is one hopped off the fence. Could have a play at home. Brandon Garcia on the relay. No, he doesn't pick it up clean, but the runner got held at third. That was Mauger that held up at third there, and then Engel cruising into second base with a stand-up double. So trouble now again for Lynchburg as it's runners at second and third for Methodist. Caleb Green, the speedy left fielder from Bahama, North Carolina. He reached because of the error in his first at bat. Lynchburg's going to pull the corners in. And this might be, again, just out of respect for a bunting probability as much as trying to cut the runner down at home. Good, strong breaking ball there from Josh Jorman. 0-1 count on Caleb Green. Tristan Melvin is on deck. Runners at second and third here. Nice pitch from Josh Jorman. Came with the fastball. Inner third right there, low and in on Caleb Green. Tough pitch to hit. 0-2 now. Good job by Jorman to go right after him. First with the off speed, then with the heater. Here's the 0-2. Down. Sprayed to the right side. Ben Jones will slide that direction, stand up and fire to first for the out. But another run is in. It's another ground out RBI for Methodist. This time 4-3 from Caleb Green. But the Monarchs have got the lead back, 2-1. to one. We are in the top of the fourth inning. Lynchburg will have 6-7-8 due up. Gavin Collins leading off for Lynchburg in their half of the fourth. Still a runner on third. Still a dangerous situation here for junior third baseman Tristan Melvin. First pitch strike from Josh Jorman. Jorman's not messing around. I give him credit for going after hitters after he did fall behind Mauger. Ground ball, left side. Hollywood on the dive, big long throw, and he threw that out of play. So that's going to be a base hit and an error. Run will score. Brandon Garcia is beside himself out there. It was really a tough play, and, and I, I don't think Brandon Garcia should feel bad about the effort. He just came up, and the throw sailed out of his hand. It's one where because of the backhand dive, I feel certain that he didn't quite have the complete four-seam throwing grip that he normally would be looking for. So when he comes up and throws this ball, it just kind of airmailed, sailed out of his hand, and it ended up on the hill. Here's a push bunt to the right side. Jorman can't field it. And there you go. There's the small ball. There's the bunting game from Methodist. Put pressure on the inner defenses. See how they handle it. And now it's runners at the corners. That was on the first pitch, too. Leadoff man Jackson Deal back up again. 
This is his third at bat of the game. One for two already with a single in his first plate appearance. So that's probably back-to-back -back singles. It is back-to-back -back singles, I believe, there between Melvin and Rinzel. And they're both on the corners right now. Josh Jorman pitching from the stretch. His team down three to one. The Monarchs are working their game plan to a T. And there was a double in this inning as well. Don't forget about Banks' angle. I mean, Methodist is not just all bunting. It's not all just punching Judy out there. That's the old phrase that, that uh, old school baseball fans used. And then remember the old Texas leaguer term. That was the one that you would hear for a ball that just kind of blooped into the outfield, a Texas leaguer. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not all just soft stuff for Methodists by any means. They do have a double in this inning. And the Monarchs have gotten four base runners on in this inning. Still two at the corners with a 1-1 count for the leadoff man, Jackson Deal, from China Grove, North Carolina. Good pitch from Josh Jorman. There's that low and in fastball. Really tough to hit. Nice pitch. One, two count. Maybe Jorman goes back there. Let's see. Could be the breaking ball again. Could be a running situation now for Methodist with two outs and two strikes. No, swinging. Jackson Deal just throws the hands at that one and shoots it through the right side of the infield. Three straight singles now for the Monarchs. They've got four hits in the inning. And Methodist now leads four to one. Jackson Deal's got two hits. Now batting number five, Hunter Holman. Hunter Holman, the catcher, is up. Hit by pitch in his first plate appearance. Flew out to right in the second one. Starting to see some stirring in the Lynchburg bullpen. Nobody throwing just yet, but it does look like a relief option might be grabbing a baseball out of the bag there and starting to get loose as Riley O'Donovan is at the mound chatting with Josh Jorman. This could be two-by time for a reliever. It could also just be to settle Jorman down, reminder of the game plan. This is one that I've talked about, too. When you have these long innings, it's nice to give your pitcher a break. It's not a full break like you would have in between innings when your team bats, but it is something at least. You can let your pitcher get the heart rate down a little bit, settle things just a bit. Runners on first and second. And this is Hunter Holman. Banks Hartman is on deck. Hunter Holman hits 415 on the season coming into the game. Banks Hartman hits 446 coming into the game. So this is a very dangerous spot for Lynchburg. Hornets have two outs, but you cannot take either of the hitters. You really can't take any of the nine in this lineup for granted for Methodist. We've seen that already. 1-1 one, one count. Runners go. O'Donovan throwing to third. Good shot there, but the jump was too good. Jump was just too good, and it's a stolen base. Two of them, actually, as the runner from first advanced. Now it's two in scoring position for Hunter Holman. I think I was going to say you can't take Hunter Holman or, Bre or Banks Hartman for granted, but really you can't take anybody for granted. Wide one there that Riley O'Donovan really should get high marks for getting his mitt on. It caromed back down the first base line, but the runner couldn't go anywhere. I, I thought Riley O'Donovan on that steal attempt, it was a really quick exchange and a strong throw. But the jump from second to third was just too good. 3-1 count for Hunter Holman. Here's the pitch from Jorman. Holman went down low to get that one, and he drove it. Deep to right field, that ball is gone. Over the right field wall, a three-run jack for Hunter Holman. So it's been a little bit of everything in this inning for Methodist. They have bunted. They've put pressure on the defense. They've stolen bases. They've taken a walk, and now they have hit a three-run home run. Hunter Holman has left the yard. That is his second home run of the season. Just five for Methodist as a team now. Holman has two of them. Bases clear for another talented hitter, Banks Hartman. And this has turned into a monster inning for Methodist. They lead 7-1. to one. Banks Hartman is the ninth hitter that has been sent to the plate in the inning for the Monarchs. Jorman got a 1-1 one, one count. Caleb Rogers on deck. He actually flew out to center 
to begin this long inning. Hartman swung at a breaking ball there. It's in the outfield. That's Eddie Gimble, no problem, for the third out of the inning, but it was a problem inning for Lynchburg as Methodist put seven across, or six across, rather. Monarchs now lead 7-1 to one over the Hornets. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go into personal training and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. Six-run inning. That was worth the price of admission for Monarchs fans. And we'll say hello to any Methodist fans that might be watching. Glad to have you along for the ride here this Tuesday afternoon. We know we got a lot of Lynchburg fans watching. These weekday games, I always say they're a little bit tougher for most people to get to. On, on average, uh-oh, Gavin Collins has gotten hit again. Gavin Collins is creeping up the career leaderboard in hit-by-pitch. Second batter that Jackson Kuhn has plunked. It was, a, it was a long inning for Jackson Kuhn to sit over there and wait. You're glad for the run support for sure, but you might get slightly out of your rhythm as he hits Gavin Collins with the first pitch there. Uh, let me update you as Riley O'Donovan is one for one. He singled in his first at bat. Strike one on Riley O'Donovan, a ball Hunter Holman bobbled. But Gavin Collins has now been hit 47 times in his career. Seven hit by pitch this season for Gavin Collins. 46 in his career. It's 47 in his career, I believe. I'll double check it, fans. 0-2 count on Riley O'Donovan. Gavin Collins is a senior. He's been a fixture in the starting lineup, so he has played a lot of games, but that's still a lot of hit by pitch. 47 of them, I think, unofficially. 0-2 count on Riley O'Donovan, that is official. Breaking ball outside for Kuhn. Another one that Hunter Holman, the catcher, bobbled. Maybe he's breaking in a new mitt or something. A lot of balls are popping out. Now, it actually worked out for him because one ball escaped his mitt. Ben Jones tried to advance in the last inning and Holman threw him out at second. I doubt he's doing it intentionally, but you got a big arm like he does. You can erase some, some mistakes that maybe another catcher might not be able to. 2-2 two -two count. Fastball came in high to Riley O'Donovan. 7-1 ball game now. Six spot in the top of the fourth for Methodist. O'Donovan, second hit of the game. He's starting to heat up again. Riley rocking one into left field for a hard single. Second hit of the ball game. And that is hit number four for Lynchburg. And get this, Brandon Garcia has two. Riley O'Donovan has two. So four hits for the team but just among two players. Here's Eddie Gimble, flew out to right in his first at bat. Riley O'Donovan, really swinging a good bat all season in his entire career. That's now 87 hits in the career for Riley O'Donovan. Breaking ball, Gimble lays off. It's a 7-1 ball game. Methodist got their seven runs on Five hits, including a three-run home run. Some Lynchburg error in there. There was a walk in there. And really, Methodist made the most of those opportunities. A really impressive inning. They used some of that bunting. They used the stolen base in there as well. They just can pressure a defense in so many ways. 1-1 one, one count, Eddie Gimble. Take a two-seam fastball. Might even have been a change-up from Jackson Kuhn for a strike. But now the count is one and two. Nobody out 
in the bottom of the fourth. Still plenty of ball game left. Ryan Long is on deck for Lynchburg. Collins leads off at second. O'Donovan at first. Here's the pitch to Gimble. Upstairs for ball two. Three-run home run from Hunter Holman was the big damage for Methodist. But they had scored three in the inning even prior to that. There's another ball to Eddie Gimble, and now it's a full count. Lynchburg dugout coming alive, urging their hitter on, facing the sophomore Jackson Kuhn. Kuhn set, and here's the pitch. Gimble. Slashes it to the third baseman. He hangs tough down on one knee. Got the out there and then threw it away. Another ball that has skipped away at first base. Both teams have had this happen a little bit. And Eddie Gimble will slide head first into second. It's a fielder's Slide choice four, for Eddie Gimble. Runners do move up to second and third. There is one out. Ryan Long is the hitter. He grounded into a fielder's choice to the shortstop in his first at bat and then ended up advancing to second on an overthrow and then later scored. Ryan Long has scored the only run in the game so far. He was driven in by Brandon Garcia who is on deck. 1-0 count with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Jackson Kuhn working from the wind up again. He did this earlier with runners on third and earlier with runners on second and third as well. Strike one to Ryan Long. 1-1 one, one count with one out. Six-run Monarch lead. Methodist is going to have Caleb Rogers, the four-hole hitter, due up when they come back in the top of the fifth. Fastball up for ball two to Ryan Long. Ryan Long's another guy with a very long career. Played 44 games his freshman year. Hit 264 that season. And he's got over 60 hits in his career now here at Lynchburg. That one was at the top of the zone, but a strike. And now the count is two balls and two strikes with one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Seven to one ball game here between Methodist and Lynchburg. Here's Kuhn from the windup. Kicks and deals. Long got under that right side. Infielders have room. This will be the first baseman in foul territory. Banks Engel pulling that one in for the second out of the inning. Brandon Garcia, two for two. He drove in Ryan Long. So he's got the only RBI in the game for Lynchburg. Another base hit here would score at least one and possibly two. It's Riley O'Donovan leading off at third. Eddie Gimble bouncing off at second. Here's Kuhn from the windup, straight down the middle to Brandon Garcia for strike number one. Brandon Garcia has... Now hit safely in nine of his last ten. He is the reigning Old Dominion Athletic Conference Player of the Week. That was for week seven in the season. It seems like we just started a blink of an eye ago, but we're, we're over halfway now, or we will be when this game is done. This is game 21 of 40 for Lynchburg. Game 21 of 40 for Methodist. It's game number 23. Garcia. Flares it to center field. Long run, but the catch is made there on the move by Austin Renzel. Lynchburg will strand two in scoring position, and the Hornets trail by six. Monarchs on top, 7-1 to one at Fox Field in Lynchburg.
Dominic Rollins is on to start the fifth inning for Lynchburg on the mound. We lost. We last saw Dominic Rollins Sunday. Got a win without throwing a pitch, believe it or not. There was a bases clearing double, double excuse me, from Campbell Charneco from Washington and Lee. Dominic Rollins came on in relief. Then Charneco wandered off the base to get out intentionally because Washington and Lee was, in a sense, trying to beat the clock. They wanted to make sure they got the game in before the sun went down because then it would revert back to the previous full inning, which Lynchburg had a lead going in to the top of the ninth. So if you're sufficiently confused, uh, we don't blame you there. But Dominic Rollins comes in, gets the pickoff when Campbell Charneco essentially gives himself up intentionally. Lynchburg then came on to win in the bottom of the ninth, walk off walk. So Dominic Rollins got the victory without throwing a pitch, which is always fun. Rollins now with that win is 3-0 and on the season. This is appearance number 10. So he has definitely made some appearances where he has thrown a pitch. But it was, it was strange for sure. And you can go back and and watch the finish and maybe just watching the ninth inning of that second game on Sunday would be fun because it was wild. Lynchburg had a one-run lead going into it. Campbell Charneco, a bases clearing double for Washington and Lee. They thought they had enough cushion and enough of a lead that they could hold. That turned out to be wrong for Washington and Lee as the Hornets came storming back. Lynchburg will have to storm back in this one in a sense. We're only in the fifth inning, but Lynchburg is down by six. It's a 7-1 Monarch lead and a leadoff walk from Dominic Rollins. Rollins has missed the zone again to Brandon Mauger, who is 0 for 1 with a walk. He's a freshman from Altamonte Spring, Florida. It's a Florida heavy lineup for Methodist to go along with quite a few from North Carolina. Methodist in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Great campus down there, big military town. And uh, just, a, just a host of great ball players that have come through and played at Methodist. Bunt shown there from Mauger as he squares all the way around. Methodist, one, one of the few teams that still squares all the way around. Watch if you see it again here. He'll bring the back foot even with the front foot. Here, there it goes. I mean, completely square in the batter's box. He's got the full chest facing the pitcher, Dominic Rollins. And that's another one that you, again, used to see quite a bit more, quote, unquote, back in the day. Now teams will prefer just to kind of get the bat out front on the bunt. You almost keep the feet in the same position. You might drop that. Dominic Rollins nearly threw one away. Ryan Long saved that one. Good play by Long. But the bunting form has, has changed over the years. You don't see many people completely square around like that anymore. It's a one-two count. Bunt may be off as Rollins throws over to first again. To keep an eye on Caleb Rogers, who walked to lead off this inning. Caleb Rogers on the season. Six for seven in the stolen base department. Fastball misses high. And now the count is two balls and two strikes. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth inning. Monarchs looking to hold on to some momentum. They scored six in the fourth. Lynchburg scored their lone one run in the bottom of the second inning. That was Brandon Garcia driving in Ryan Long. Full count. with Banks Engel on deck for Methodist. He hit a double in that big inning. Rollins continuing to throw over to keep the runner close. Caleb Rogers who walked. Rogers is 0 for 2 now with a walk. Rollins will throw another one over there. Gotta like the commitment to keeping the runners close. Lynchburg has always been so good in that department, and, and you have to be with people that run the bases like Methodist. Another walk from Dominic Rollins, back-to-back -back free passes, and this will bring up Banks Engel, hitting with two on and nobody out, doubled in his last at bat. Just back to the scouting report, I think the sacrifice bunt might be on here for Coach Tom Austin, who does 
give the signs in the third base coach's box. Lynchburg is prepared, corners are in, and there it is. Strike one on a take, and it will be an 0-1 count. Runners had to scramble back. Riley O'Donovan looked to come up and maybe try to pick somebody off on a back pick. 0-1 count, Rollins checks the runner. Another pitch, they will try to throw behind the runner at second. It hit him, Ben Jones will scramble over and scoop it up with a backhand. And Caleb Rogers can't go anywhere. I think it hit Caleb Rogers. Brandon Garcia was trying to scoop it out of there in the midst of it. And here's your second look. Yeah, it looked like it might have just hit the, the calf, the right calf of the runner at second. 0-2 pitch, out for ball number one. Banks Engel not showing the bunt there. But back to Methodist and, and their commitment to the bunting game. They will bunt with two strikes. They're one of those teams that will actually still do that as well. Jones sprinting in to try to run a pick play and maybe get Caleb Rogers napping, but he was back in time. And that's how you counter that, just try to pick more. There's quite a few other things pitchers can and should do to slow down and stop the running game. Swung on, sent to right field, but it will, will drift foul as Madden, Jones, and Long, right, second, and first, were all on the move in that direction. But it's just a foul ball, and it'll make it a one-two count with nobody out in the top of the fifth inning. Lynchburg will have two, three, four due up in their half of the fifth. O'Kelly McWilliams will lead off. Rollins going to pick up and spin, pick again. And the runner, Caleb Rogers, back safely. One, two count. Here's the pitch from Roland. Good spot. Good nibble right there. Just nearly got a piece of the edge of the plate. But it is a ball, 2-2. Two, two. On deck for Methodist is Caleb Green. 0 for 2, did reach on an error, did get an RBI as well. Swing and a miss, first base was occupied, so even though the ball wasn't caught clean, it's still a strikeout, and O'Donovan doesn't have to throw or tag. Engels now struck out twice to go along with his double, and here is Caleb Green. An error by Brandon Garcia at short allowed Green to reach in his first at bat, and he grounded out to second base but drove in a run as part of that six-run fourth inning. There's one out. Green, not a check swing, but sort of half-hearted. This could be a double play for Lynchburg, and it is. Hornets defense getting two for the price of one. Ball back to Rollins. He feeds it to Garcia. Hollywood flips across the dirt for the third out of the inning. And let's see if Lynchburg can use that to get some momentum. Hornets trailing by six, seven, one. Methodist through four and a half. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. The Lynchburg Hornets defense turns another one of those patented double plays. 17 this season now 
Lynchburg led the country in double plays last year with 51. 51 for Lynchburg last year. So 17 through 21 games, or 20 and a half maybe might be a better way to phrase it as we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Methodist got a couple on, but can't do any better. Dominic Rollins pitching around a couple walks there. We'll see if Dom Rollins comes back out for the top of the sixth inning. This is O'Kelly McWilliams. He has yet to see a pitch that he can reach as the first two ended up bouncing in the other batter's box. But there's strike one from Jackson Kuhn, sophomore. Outstanding stuff right now for Methodist. He surrendered one run. That's on four hits. Lynchburg has left six stranded, four in scoring position. Lynchburg's gotten two hits from Brandon Garcia and two hits from Riley O'Donovan. The rest of the lineup is hitless right now. O'Kelly McWilliams did walk in his first plate appearance, and Ivy is looking to continue a nine-game hitting streak. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth IV, the Roman numerals. And I think most guys, when they're saying it as the nickname, it sounds more like Ivy, like Ivy-Y, which makes sense. And is a, quite a bit more fun, I think. Ivy takes a fast ball at the eye line, and now it's a full count, three and two. McWilliams has hits in 12 of his last 13, and he's reached base now in 20 straight. Only game he did not get on was the season opener against East Texas Baptist. Hard, this one stung one hopper at the second baseman who throws with the right knee down and gets Ivy by a step there at first base. Good play from Brandon Mauger, the second baseman. That was hit well. Lynchburg only has four hits, but file that one in the hard hit ball category. Can't feel too bad about that if you're O'Kelly McWilliams. Here's Ben Jones. Ben Jones reached on a hit by pitch in his last plate appearance. That was on the first pitch. Wants to take a rip at the first pitch this time. Might have been a change up from Kuhn. It's good stuff, and it's strike one. You know, Jackson Kuhn coming into this game, numbers were not really outstanding. He had appeared in nine, no starts. The ERA was over nine. He had more walks than strikeouts. He'd surrendered 22 hits in 13 in the third innings. The batting average against coming in for Jackson Kuhn was over 370. So the numbers look rather pedestrian, but so far today, Jackson Kuhn has been anything but. He's held a very talented Lynchburg offense to just one run. This is a Hornet offense that in their last 10 games has scored over 12 runs per game. They've homered in nine of their last 11, and they're hitting over 370 as a team in their last five games. So all the different numbers for Lynchburg offensively are looking great, but right now Jackson Kuhn is twirling a gem for Methodist to keep the Hornets at bay. Full count delivery to Ben Jones. He loops this one into right field and that's down. Base hit for Benny Bombs. Long single there as the right fielder had him play deeply, which he should against Ben Jones. Don't forget Ben Jones first at bat, he flew out to the warning track. So now Ben Jones has got the fifth hit of the game for Lynchburg. And it's the first hit by a player not named Garcia or O'Donovan. Ben Jones with a single. 7-1 ball game. Eric Hyatt steps up. Hyatt has walked and flown out to right. One out. Breaking ball comes in just off the plate, and it's ball one. Methodist in the yellow and green. Lynchburg in their home whites. Quinn Madden waiting on deck. Madden has a 10-game hitting streak. He's 0-2 for 2 in this one. We'll see if Madden can continue the streak and possibly get Lynchburg one step closer to a viable comeback. Down six at the moment. Ben Jones leads off at first. 1-1 one, one count to the junior from Woodbridge, Eric Hyatt. Swung on and lifted foul towards Wake Fieldhouse, where I believe the Lynchburg field hockey team is getting a workout in. That was the report from Ed Smith and Holden Fiedler. They were prepping for a workout when I went through there at Wake. Yes, fans, I got some shoulder presses in up there 
before the game. Just wanted to get the blood pumping, get all the synapses firing, the whole the mind body soul connection, and then um, I'll ruin that by eating some unhealthy food after the game. But it could be an all broccoli dinner potentially. These are inside jokes. But you're on the inside now, fans. Even if you're not laughing, as Eric Hyatt fouls another one in the direction of Wake Fieldhouse. Good, good uh, grouping of fans out here today. Again, obviously not as big of a crowd as we would have on a weekend situation. Had, had a great crowd here Sunday for the Washington and Lee Lynchburg doubleheader. And there's a, a bit more modest grouping out there, but nothing modest about this ball. Eric Hyatt pumps into the right center gap. Ben Jones looking to go first to third on the base hit. He will, and now it's runners at the corners for Lynchburg as the Hornets are threatening in the bottom of the fifth inning. Good piece of hitting from Eric Hyatt to drive that one. Now it's back-to-back -back singles for Lynchburg, and it's two guys not named, Garcia and O'Donovan. So Jones and Hyatt join the hit parade. Lynchburg has six now total to go along with two walks and two hit batters that the Hornets have taken. So that should make 10 base runners total right now for Lynchburg, but they've only got one run to show for themselves so far. Quinn Madden can change that with one swing of the bat. Team leader in home runs. Great time for one. He'll pound this one into the ground, but foul. It's no one count. Madden was itchy. He was ready for that one. You can just tell from the body language. He's, he's got a lot of fast twitch muscle. Just the way Quinn Madden moves. There's a the shot at Ben Jones, another guy with a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers that have been honed by the director of strength and conditioning, Ed Smith. Two Ed Smith references in one half inning. Coach Smith, if you're listening, the check better be in the mail, buddy. Seriously. 0-1 count on Quinn Madden. Swung on and pounded, this time airborne, but also foul, just like his last swing. And now it's an 0-2 count. See how Jackson Kuhn pitches off of that. As, as a pitcher, when you see a guy pull a couple foul, you should be thinking, let me throw something even slower than that. And if you've already thrown your, your off-speed, slower pitches, maybe it's time to try to get one of the other batter's box. Actually, this is just a fastball upstairs, but it is ball one. Madden lays off. I suppose that's one way to take advantage of a guy's aggressiveness, too. Go with, go with maybe a neck-high fastball there. Not a bad thought from Kuhn. Madden was ready for it. Here comes the 1-2. Pulled into the left field area between the third baseman and the shortstop. Hit streak is alive at 11 straight for Quinn Madden. It's three straight singles for Lynchburg, and they play their second run of the ball game. RBI single for Quinn Madden. And he'll take those as well. Yeah, he likes to hit the ball long and far. But with a two-strike approach like that, that's a pretty good piece of hitting as Madden just yanks one past the third baseman there for his first hit of the game and now an 11-game hit streak for Quinn Madden. Here's Gavin Collins, also working with a 10-game hit streak, but he is hitless so far in this one. Collins is 0 for 1, and he was hit by a pitch in his last plate appearance. One out, runners on first and second. This could be the big inning for Lynchburg. First baseman played behind Quinn Madden on the right side of the infield. Rest of the squad at double play depth. Gavin Collins leans into one. Left center gap. Long run for the center fielder, and he makes a diving grab going back towards the Fox Field sign. That was more than outstanding from the freshman Austin Renzel. That's a 10 of 10 right there, and he probably saves multiple runs with that. My goodness, this ball was beat on by Gavin Collins. And look at the long run from Renzel, tracking it back. Seemed like he caught it on his feet and then stumbled to the ground at the end of the grab. But any way you slice it, that is a great catch. Lynchburg has now hit at least three balls hard for outs. File those away. Riley O'Donovan is two for two. O'Kelly McWilliams hit a ball hard in this inning at the second baseman. Ben Jones had a long, hard fly out to the warning track in the first inning. And then that one there for Gavin Collins. So it's not as if Lynchburg is swinging a bad bat right now, team-wise. Sometimes you got to hit them where they ain't. O'Donovan 
Looking to go three for three. Not going to happen here as the shortstop will take it to short way for the final out of the inning. Lynchburg does get one across, but they leave a couple stranded. And Methodist still leading by five through five complete at Foxy. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interaction with the faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. It's live broadcasting at its finest. Okay, that might be a stretch, but it's pretty good live broadcasting here on LHSN. We always find a way to have fun. And we are proud of our work, even though we make mistakes too. We love your feedback. Just remember we have feelings. We appreciate all your comments. Just got you just got to keep in mind we do have feelings. Swing and a miss from Tristan Melvin as there's a baseball game going on, not just a comedy show. A lukewarm comedy show at best. 7-2, Methodist leading by five. Tristan Melvin, the third baseman, is hitting with an 0-2 count. Still Dominic Rollins pitching for Lynchburg. As Melvin will foul one back. Rollins started inning number five. Walked the two, for, uh, yeah, walked the two first batters he faced. Struck out Banks Engel and then got Caleb Green to bounce into a 1-6-3 double play to end the inning. It's a good look at Dominic Rollins as he comes set. Ground ball, left side, Gavin Collins moving back towards the outfield. Now throwing across, and it's an out. Nice stretch by Ryan Long. Another good play from Gavin Collins. And there's one from Collins that's not one of those running throws like I talk about. He's so great at those, but he's got all the plays. He's got all the throws. And it really is a delight to watch a guy like Gavin Collins play third base, which, again, left side of the infield, shortstop and third base, that is so difficult high degree of difficulty even the routine ones can be difficult in a baseball game that's why you got to really enjoy guys like Gavin Collins and Brandon Garcia the way they operate the way they make it look easy at times and then they'll even make a few of those highlight reel plays and a few of the, the circus style plays as well all kinds of activity in the Lynchburg bullpen looks like at least three arms getting loose fastball upstairs from Dominic Rollins, it's a 2-1 count on Austin Renzel. Center fielder made a really good grab last inning to save at least one run, maybe more, for the Monarchs. Another freshman in this lineup. It is uh, three freshmen in the starting lineup for Methodist. The rest are juniors. So the Monarchs should have high hopes for the future, although I'm sure they haven't closed the books on this season either. 3-1 count on the nine-hole hitter. Now it's ball four. Rollins has now walked three of the six that he has faced. It's not a number that's going to make you feel warm and fuzzy if you're the Lynchburg coaching staff. Don't see anybody making a move out of the dugout yet. Dominic Rollins will get to face the talented Jackson Deal. He's one of those juniors, and he is two for three. Jackson Deal has a couple singles. 
But strong pickoff throw from Dominic Rollins. We've seen this. Lynchburg is committed to holding the runners, especially against the Monarchs, who like to run. Less stolen bases per game than Lynchburg, though. But Methodist traditionally, running is just something that they do along with the bunting so effectively. And really, to get in the Monarchs lineup, you have to be able to do those things. That's sort of the baseline for Coach Tom Austin. Everybody up and down has to be able to bunt efficiently and effectively. And it really helps if you can run the bases, steal some bases, be smart out on the base paths. All those things are prerequisites for Coach Austin. Over 1,200 wins in his career. The number exactly right now is 1,275 for Tom Austin, who started at Methodist in 1980. And he's still spry and full of life out there. Jackson Deals got his third hit of the ball game. Roping one up the middle. Rollins got his glove out there in sort of a half-hearted attempt, but really wasn't that close to it. Number five, Hunter Hammond. And that will be another base hit for Jackson Deal. Got seven for Methodist as a team. He's got three of them. And here comes the head coach, Travis Beasley. So it seems like time for a new arm for Lynchburg. We'll pause for just a moment and identify the new pitcher right after a short timeout on LHSN. The new pitcher for Lynchburg will be Sam Allheight. He comes in a relief of Dominic Rollins. Josh Jorman started this game. Sam Allheight on the season. This will be appearance number five. Last pitch pitched against Wittenberg in that midweek doubleheader was back on March the 5th. So basically a month has gone by since we've seen Sam Allheight, but he's been working. He'll be ready. The ERA is north of seven for Sam Allheight. He has pitched just over two and a third innings this season. He will be facing Hunter Holman, who homered in his last at bat. Left on left matchup, probably playing some role in the calculus here for Coach Travis Beasley and his outstanding coaching staff. Sam Allheight enters with runners on first and second. Tough spot right here for Sam Allheight. Let's see what he's got. Looked like he tried to twist a breaking ball in there, but didn't get the release. It's high, and it's a 1-0 count. Banks Hartman is on deck. This is Hunter Holman. One for two, hit by pitch, and a three-run homer. It was part of that big six-run inning. Allheight will spin, does not throw. The umpire will note that that's his one disengagement of the rubber without a throw. All height will tow the slab again, get the sign, looks down, pumps and fires, away for ball two. Lynchburg will have 8-9-1 due up in their half of the sixth. Eddie Gimble is in that spot at the moment. Could be time for some pinch hitters, maybe not. We'll see what Coach Beasley has in store. All height fires in. 
block and slide by Riley O'Donovan was successful, but it's ball three, 3-0 three count. Runners on first and second for the Monarchs. All heights set at the belly button, kicks and fires. Better pitch right there. It does catch the edge for strike one. 3-1 count for a dangerous hitter, Hunter Holman, Jr. from Tampa, Florida. Here's the pitch. Thought about swinging, laid off. Had some good action on it from all height. I don't think Holman was really ready for that. He'll have to be ready now with two strikes, though. Full count. Hunter Holman hits 4-15 on the season. He's now got two home runs, a triple, six doubles. 35 hits total for this junior. Here's the pitch, fouls it away. Hunter Holman has three sacrifice bunts as well on the, on the year. Back to the bunting game from Methodist. Everybody's got to be able to bunt, everybody in the order. Not really a sack bunt situation right here, though, with one out. All height, fires in there. It's another foul ball. Holman looks like he's switched on and ready. Maybe all height can get him in chase mode. You never know. There's danger in that, though, with three balls. Full count, you may walk the guy. Let's see what all height goes with. Here's the pitch. Just a fastball off the plate. Holman did not offer. There's another walk and another base runner on, and the bases are now loaded for Banks-Hartman. Banks Hartman, freshman from Oak Island, North Carolina. He has a sack bunt. He is grounded out to first base and also flown out to left field. The designated hitter, Banks Hartman, is the leading average man for Methodist at 446 coming into this game. Watch for a squeeze play of some kind if you're Lynchburg. Strike one from Sam Allheit. Good job to get ahead there. Lynchburg now as a team. There is the bunt. Put down. All Heights got a hurry to go to first. They'll get the out there. But, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Squeeze bunt perfectly placed. Gavin Collins was rushing in from the third base spot to try to get there in time. But it's a better play for All Heights to come off, pick it up, and throw to first. The eighth run of the game scores. It looks like we'll get another new Lynchburg arm coming up in just a moment. We'll pause again. It's an 8-2 Methodist lead right now over Lynchburg on LHSN.
New pitcher for Lynchburg in the top of the sixth is the sophomore Trent Judd, 6'4", 185 pounds from Salem, Virginia. Appearance number two of the season for Trent Judd. We actually last saw him pitching against Wittenberg on March 5th. Started one game of the doubleheader, did go two innings. ERA right now for Trent Judd is at nine. He surrendered two earned runs in that. And here it is, appearance number two. Comes in the ball game with his club trailing by six, two outs. Runners on second and third, 2-0 count as Judd has missed the zone against Caleb Rogers. Rogers has walked once, grounded out for an RBI, and then flew out to center field. Swung on and fouled back. I think it hit the it hit the LHSN mic. Could you hear that, fans? Our field mic, crowd mic, is stationed in that direction. And uh, it made at least some kind of contact with it. We'll check on the microphone, make sure it's okay. 2-1 count. Judd comes in. This ball's laced into right field. Madden going back on the trot over the shoulder, making the catch to end the inning. But it is a one-run inning for the Monarchs. They add on. 8-2, to two, Methodist on top over Lynchburg through five and a half at Foxy. Bottom of the sixth inning here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. There is a light rain outside, so I have to apologize, fans. I said we weren't going to get any rain today. I said the rain was going to happen tomorrow and maybe Thursday. But it turns out that there's actually a little bit of a light rain out there right now. Don't think it'll affect play too much, but what do we know from inside the press box here? It is the Daniel E. Wooldridge class of 1959 press box. Here's Logan Webster, a new hitter, to face a new pitcher. The new arm for Methodist is Drew Morsbacher. Drew Morsbacher is a freshman from State College, Pennsylvania. Stats so far this season, this will be appearance number five for Morsbacher. He did pitch this weekend against Greensboro through one inning, gave up one earned run on two hits. Morsebacher has struck out three on the season, walked two. Just over four and two-thirds innings. Logan Webster's been on a heater. He's in that group of guys that is really swinging it really good right now. Logan Webster has an eight-game hitting streak. He has extra base hits in his last four in a row, and he is hitting over 500 in his last four. Nine for his last 17 right now for Logan Webster. 2-0 count against the new pitcher, Morsebacher. Check swing from Webster, holds up, but it's strike one. And now a 2-1 count. Nine-hole hitter Ryan Long on deck for Lynchburg. Morsebacher misses the zone with that pitch. Three balls and one strike. We are in the bottom of the sixth, so if you're Lynchburg, you're still confident about a comeback opportunity, but you are running out of chances. Got to get busy, and it would be very helpful to get something on the board this inning. That, not that you need to erase the entire six-run deficit as Logan Webster will take a walk. For Lynchburg, that is team walk number three in this game. 
Team walk number three. Actually, their first base on balls since inning number one. That tells you what kind of job Jackson Kuhn did, really not giving Lynchburg free bases and free opportunities. And we know Lynchburg is so good about that. Lynchburg on the season walks over five and a half times per games, per game, excuse me. It was 112 coming into the season. So 112 in 20 games equates to 5.60 by my math, which is unofficial. The math department at Lynchburg is a, is a department that I really should spend more time in. 1-1 one, one count to Ryan Long. Morsebacher set. Logan Webster leading off at first. Long swings on this. Got under it. Catcher may have a chance here. Tough play. Very tough play. But the out is made. Brandon Garcia, as he was walking up to the plate, was kind of looking at the netting here on the backstop, wondering if maybe this ball grazed the net or not. Great look at it. Nice job by the catcher, Hunter Holman. Hunter Holman is impressed, hasn't he? That is a really tough play for a catcher, those pop-ups. Might be getting a few raindrops in the eyes while you look up. Then you got to find the backstop, navigate that, pull it in. Plus, you got a runner on base. You can't completely let your guard down. It wasn't like it was far enough for the runner, Logan Webster, to advance. But still, all in all, A-plus stuff there from the catcher, Hunter Holman. A one count on Brandon Garcia. He's two for three. Flew out to center in his last at bat. One one count as the freshman Drew Morsbacher working with a runner on first. That's Logan Webster. Brandon Garcia takes another one low and away. Good hold there. Plate discipline so good for Brandon Garcia. He is third on this team in walks behind Ben Jones and Eric Hyatt. Brandon Garcia has walked 17 times this year. He's actually tied with Eric Hyatt for that lead. Although Eric Hyatt has walked once in this game, so Hyatt is up to 18. 3-1 count. Could be another walk coming for Brandon Garcia, though. See if he gets something that he likes to hit. Garcia with so many multi-hit games in his career already. He's got another one today, but this will be walk number 18 of the season for Hollywood. Brandon Garcia, just another statistical note, multi-hit games now in eight of his last 10. Swinging it so good, but that's a walk. That'll move Webster up to second. Runners on first and second now for Lynchburg. And O'Kelly McWilliams, who walked in his first plate appearance, flew out to right, and then scorched one to the second baseman, got out 4-3. One out in the bottom of the sixth. Strike one on a tailing two-seam fastball from the righty Morsbacher. And O'Kelly McWilliams will hit with an 0-1 count. Ben Jones is on deck. Benny Bombs is one for two so far today with a hit by pitch. Double play depth for Methodist. First baseman behind Brandon Garcia over there on the right side of the dirt. Another fastball for a strike. McWilliams is in an 0-2 hole. You know, really, if you're Lynchburg, said it's now or never time. Not, it's not quite now or never time. We're in the bottom of the sixth. But you're down six. You don't want to try to make a multi-run comeback in the ninth inning or anything, which is what Lynchburg has done a few times this season, including against Washington and Lee. That walk-off walk for a victory. Joe Gordon, the game-winning RBI, the hero, Joe Gordon on Sunday against Washington and Lee. Nick Williams laces this one at the third baseman. Webster able to get back in time. Didn't quite see the ball at first as it spills into the outfield. Now Logan Webster will move up to third base. It's another hard out for Lynchburg. File it away. They've got at least four of those. That ball was pounded at the third baseman. Pretty heavy, heady grab right there by Tristan Melvin. The snare of that one. Then try to go to second for the double play. Mick Williams has now gotten out twice in a row on balls, and he's just hit right on the nose. Back to hitting is really tough. Nine defenders against one hitter. Ben Jones will bang one through the hole. Benny Bombs has two base hits, run scores, RBI there as Logan Webster 
steps on the plate for Lynchburg's third run of the game. First pitch rip there for Ben Jones. Got to like that. Knew he was going to get hot eventually. You, you, just, you just had that feeling. He's too quality. His form is too good. He's never going to go cold for, for a long, long time. Yeah, back to hitting's tough, so he's going to have some 0 for days here or there. But you're never going to keep Ben Jones silent for two or three weeks at a time. Another guy that's in that same mold is Eric Hyatt. He is one for two with a walk. Brandon Garcia leading off at second. Ben Jones at first. Steele could be in play here with two outs. 1-0 count for the junior, Eric Hyatt. Here's the pitch from Morsebacher. Outside and perhaps low for ball two. Quinn Madden on deck. Quinn Madden has extended his hitting streak. Quinn Madden has now an 11-game streak. 11 in a row with base hits. See if he can get into that multi-hit category again. Strike one, and now the count is two balls and one strike with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lynchburg has scored one here. Light rain continues to fall at Fox Field. Overcast pretty much all day. I thought the rain was coming in tomorrow, but what do I know? Morsebacher picks the leg up and then turns to keep an eye on Brandon Garcia. Lynchburg as a team now, up to eight hits. Three runs on eight hits. Lynchburg has stranded eight. And they've left five in scoring position. Hitters count for Eric Hyatt. See if Hyatt gets something he likes. Two down with runners on first and second. Morsebacher checking that runner at second. Brandon Garcia. Nope, ball four for Eric Hyatt. He'll move. Ahead of Brandon Garcia now in sole possession of second place on the team in walks. 19 free passes on the year now for Eric Hyatt. Team walk number five. And a mound visit coming up for the Methodist Monarchs. And let's just use this opportunity to talk more about Quinn Madden. Right fielder is one for three in this game. That expands his hitting streak to 11 straight. Quinn Madden has extra base hits in seven of his last eight. He's coming into today. He's got multiple hits in eight of his last nine. Any way you slice it, Quinn Madden has been swinging a stick that has been on fire lately. Slightly slow start to this season for Quinn Madden, but now because of this recent activity here in the month of March, Madden is the team leader in average at 378. He's a team leader in hits, 28 coming into the game. Give him 29 now. He slugs at 689. That factors in six home runs and five doubles. Hitting with the bases loaded and two outs against the freshman, Drew Morsebacher. Madden swings at the first, got it off the knuckles, floated it, and the shortstop, Caleb Rogers, pirouetting up the middle to make the grab for the final out of the inning. So Lynchburg does score one, but they leave three more stranded. And the Monarchs hold on to a five-run lead through six full innings at Fox Field. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate.
Lynchburg gets one run in the bottom of the six. They strand three. Lynchburg has left 11 on base this game, and they've left seven in scoring position. That's another stat I always say is misleading because you got to think, too. You've got more bases in scoring position than you don't. Second and third are in scoring position. First is not. Uh, so, so your chances of leaving a guy in scoring position are actually a lot better than not leaving him in scoring position. Had some minor field maintenance that went on in between innings. There is a light rain. So they added a little quick dry, a little turfus to the batter's boxes, the home plate area, and then also the pitcher's mound. Tom Austin, the head coach for Methodist, is having a, a chat with our home plate umpire right there, which is seems to have extended a little bit longer than the normal in-between innings banter. Oftentimes the, the third base coach, who is a lot of times the head coach, but he'll go by and say something to the umpire. That seemed to be a bit more than just a casual thought in between innings. I don't know if it was about the field conditions. I, I think the field's playing just fine here at Fox. We had some rain on Sunday, or we had some rain Saturday, rather. But then by Sunday, the field was just fine for the doubleheader against Washington and Lee. And it's been fairly dry overall in Central Virginia. Trent Judd pitching here in the top of the seventh came on in relief of Sam Allheight. Judd is the fourth pitcher that Lynchburg has used. And in his one batter, he got Caleb Rogers to fly out to right field to end the sixth inning. That was a one-run sixth inning for Methodist. Monarchs continue to impress. They got one in the first, six in the fourth, including the three-run homer from Hunter Holman. And then they've added one more there in the sixth. Lynchburg has one in the second, fifth, and sixth. Zeros in one, three, and four. Lynchburg will have six, seven, eight in their batting order due up. And they come back for the bottom of the seventh. Got to get there first, though. Trent Judd will work with a full count. Banks angle on deck. This is the second baseman, Brandon Mauger, hitting. He's walked twice already, grounded out to the shortstop. Now he's walked thrice, three walks, three in a row for Mauger. That's six total that Lynchburg has offered as a team. Banks Engel, a double. That was been sandwiched Banks by Engel. two strikeouts. Caleb Green is on deck for Methodist. More options freshening in the Lynchburg bullpen. And it's the day before a conference game. So general thought is you're probably going to use quite a few pitchers. That can obviously change. And it will change from team to team and then also circumstance to circumstance. If you have a pitcher that just throws it lights out, as Engel tried to bunt a high one there and whiffed, and now it's a 1-1 count. Monarchs, if you've joined us late, have used the bunting heavily in this game. Some stealing, but the bunting has been big. In fact, they got that run last inning with a squeeze bunt perfectly placed. Here's a sacrifice bunt that's also pretty good. Ryan Long will come up, get two hands on the ball, and tag Engel as he comes down the first base line. That's the first out of the inning, but a successfully executed sacrifice to get Mauger to now second. Batting, number one, Caleb Green. Here's Caleb Green. Grounded into a double play as last at bat. Grounded out to second previously and drove in a run with that. He's also reached on an error. Facing Trent Judd for the first time. Strike one across. Good presentation there from Riley O'Donovan. O'Donovan, I think, has just been getting so much better with the defensive duties as a catcher. We've known this guy can hit his entire career. We always run down those numbers, but he should get some credit for the improvements he's made defensively. Riley O'Donovan is really solid back there now. Has that big arm, too. Good frame on that low pitch. Looked like a breaking ball that came in at the knees. 1-2 count for Trent Judd. Seems to be getting a feel for it out there. Tristan Melvin is on deck for Methodist. He's one for three. Green in the batter's box now, still looking for his first hit. Good spot from Judd. Seemed to get the approval from Riley O'Donovan with the gesture with the glove there. 
And now the count is two balls and two strikes. One out with a runner on second. Judd checks him. Now he'll spin. Soft toss over to Ben Jones. Judd will get the ball back and storm up the hill and get ready for a two-strike delivery here to Caleb Green, Jr. From, from Bahama, North Carolina. Here's the pitch. Got him swinging. Nice one there by Trent Judd. It's been tough to strike out Methodist hitters today. I think that's only their third strikeout as a team. And you know Lynchburg as a team, pitching-wise, usually, usually punches out a lot. Lynchburg's K per nine as a team is 8.67. So they strike out eight and two-thirds hitters per game and just three right now. Really impressive hitting approach from Methodist. And back to doing the basics and, and doing the fundamentals. I think for an old-school coach like Tom Austin, that is a fundamental. Put the ball in play. Methodist is a team that they, they probably do change their hitting approach with two strikes. Maybe you give up some power that way, sure, but there is something to be said for making the team make a play on you. Two different schools of thought there. The general trend in baseball has gone the other direction, and that is don't change anything with two strikes. Just use your normal hitting approach. But right now, for Methodists, they're making it work. They lead 8-3. to three. Nice, sharp, breaking ball from Trent Judd. Tristan Melvin does not offer. Another thing about Methodist hitting approach that you may find interesting, fans, is for years Tom Austin wouldn't let his guys swing at a breaking ball until there was two strikes. You could not, or you were not supposed to anyway, swing at any breaking pitches. Runner will go. This ball sent into right field. Quinn Madden's got a beat on it. Long run down to the right field corner. Actually grabs it just to step inside the right field line on the warning track, but does make the catch for the final out of the inning. A scoreless inning there for Trent Judd. Good job by the sophomore, and Lynchburg will come to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning, trailing by five. Sophomore Paul Olive will tow the mound for Methodist, who leads by five in the bottom of the seventh. Paul Olive from Benson, North Carolina, will get to face Gavin Collins from Clifton, Virginia. Collins leads off, Riley O'Donovan second, and then Logan Webster was in this spot that was started in the game by Eddie Gimble. Logan Webster came in and took a walk. His first plate appearance, Logan Webster will be looking to keep an eight-game hitting streak alive, turn that into nine. Gavin Collins is trying to keep his hitting streak alive, comes in with 10 straight. So Collins will be looking to extend to 11 games. On the season, this is appearance number one for Paul Olive. Last year, he made eight appearances. Earned run average was 11.25. He did have one save, struck out eight, walked six. Paul Olive is on the mound. Well, the guys in yellow there, the Methodist Monarchs from Fayetteville, North Carolina, playing out of the USA South Conference. Trent Judd has worked an inning and a third for Lynchburg. He surrendered no hits. He has walked one. Trent Judd has struck out one. We'll see if we get more of Trent Judd or perhaps time for another pitching change for Lynchburg. They have used four 
Seems like the bullpen will be fairly intact for the road conference matchup tomorrow against the Hampton Sydney Tigers. There's strike one from Paul Olive to Gavin Collins. Collins takes a rip, sends it into center field. Center fielder battling that rain out there, which I think has gone from a light rain to more of a steady rain. I'm getting confirmation from several in the press box. It is not a light rain anymore. Gavin Collins' hitting streak is on hold. Let's hope he gets another at bat in this game. Stuck on 10 games in a row right now. Gavin Collins is 0 for 3. He was hit by a pitch. Here's Riley O'Donovan, 2 for 3. Grounded out to the shortstop last at bat. That was with the bases loaded. Lynchburg has left 11 on in this game where they are actually out hitting Methodist right now. Lynchburg three runs on eight hits. Monarchs eight, run, eight runs on seven hits. Methodist has been officially charged with three errors. Lynchburg two. Lynchburg's defense was rock solid on Sunday against Washington and Lee. And really all season, it's been very good. A few little breakdowns today. And baseball fans know it's, it's a tough game. Especially that infield play, very tough. O'Donovan fouls one away. And now the count is one ball and two strikes with one out and Logan Webster waiting on deck. Webster hit a big two run home run in game one Sunday against Washington and Lee. Swing and a miss from Riley O'Donovan. Olive got him way out front with an off speed pitch. And there's two outs. A quick two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Ryan Long on deck for Lynchburg. Always a fun day at the ballpark. A little bit more fun when Lynchburg gets a win, but we try to remain as impartial as possible. And I'm just a massive baseball fan. I, I, I can always appreciate the great things that other teams do. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that's healthy. You get some people that are the diehards that can't say anything the other team did was good. And that, that'll happen with those rivalries uh, like your Red Sox and Yankees, you know, those sorts of things. But I think, I think most baseball fans have that healthy appreciation for their opponent and anything that they might do well. Travis Beasley, head coach for Lynchburg, falls into that category as Logan Webster will get hit by a pitch. Bees is definitely in that respect everybody, fear nobody camp. And with his meticulous planning and preparation, and I don't see how Coach Travis now Beasley nine, would fear anybody. And that preparation is not just the scouting, of course. It's the, it's the things Lynchburg does as a team in practice. Let's hold that thought because we've got a pinch hitter for Lynchburg. Joe Munitz in there hitting with two outs from the left side against Paul Olive. Runner on first is Logan Webster. Webster could be a threat to run, but when you're down five, running game almost has to get turned off which is a, a really kind of a strange thing for some fans to understand because I think in most sports, when you're down by a lot, you have to take more chances. If you're playing football, you almost have to throw the ball more, gamble a bit more. Baseball, you actually have to play more conservatively when you're down by a lot. You can't gamble as much. You just got to go station to station. You got to hope you either bang out a bunch of hits or perhaps – you get some extra walks or a hit by pitch like Logan Webster, who's on first. Munitz, 2-0 count. There's strike one inside at the knees from Paul Olive. Logan Webster's hit by pitch represents the third Lynchburg hitter that has gotten bopped today. And that is always worth mentioning, part of their game plan. 2.15 per game coming in to this game. So that number will go up slightly. That was 43 hit batters in 20 games coming into this one. Deuce is wild here with two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Joe Munitz at bat. Brandon Garcia waits on deck. Logan Webster is the runner at first. Paul Olive checks him, has the sign set, deals. Fouled off by number nine, Joe Munitz. And we'll go again. Joe Munitz was sort of a bunting specialist at times in this season, but he's been getting more and more True pinch hit at bats and, and looks and attempts to swing the bat. I think the coaching staff really likes what Joe Munitz brings to the table. See if he can bring something here. 
Another two-strike pitch coming up. He'll foul it away again. Nice job by Munich to stay alive. He's a freshman from Virginia Beach. Lynchburg's got so much talent from the Tidewater and then also quite a few studs from Northern Virginia on this team. Coaching staff recruits all over, but there are definitely some hotbeds that they make sure they have their finger on the pulse there. Strong breaking ball from Olive. He started the K strut towards the dugout, but the umpire felt that it was high. Now it's a full count, two outs. Logan Webster can be on the move with the pitch. Methodist defense will have to throw across the diamond. Here it comes from Olive. Fast ball away. Full count walk drawn by Joe Munitz. Nice job there. Sixth walk Lynchburg is taken as a team. So they're over their average now in that category. It was 5.6 per game coming in. Lynchburg's got six walks against quality Methodist pitching. To go along with eight hits as well. Back to it's not as if Lynchburg is swinging the bat bad. Just haven't had some bounces go their way. They've hit some balls at defenders. Let's see what Brandon Garcia can do. Already two hits in the game. Breaking ball that was never close from Olive. 1-0 count for Brandon Garcia. Multi-hit game for Garcia. He now has eight games with more than one hit. Eight of his last 10. Eight of last 10 multi-hit games for Brandon Garcia. Mound conference here with Paul Olive. Uh, Brandon Garcia last season had 19 multi-hit games. Hollywood hit safely in 35 of 45 games last year. As Brandon Garcia looks back in our direction. Could he hear us down there? Maybe. The teammates are also sitting behind there charting with the radar gun as well. So he could, be, could have been looking at those guys. 1-0 count for Brandon Garcia as the mound conference is over. The light rain still continues to fall. I think it is back to a light rain, though, at Fox Field. Not a steady downpour like it was for a brief moment. Runners at first and second. Olive checks Webster there. Another look at him. Webster bounces back and then creeps off. Fastball wide left from our perspective. Wide right out of the hand of Paul Olive. Monarchs have 9-1-2 due up in the top of the eighth inning. In a game that is far from over, this feels like a big moment right here. Your reigning conference player of the week, Brandon Garcia at bat with an opportunity here, a hitter's count. Strike one, inside at the knees. Good spot from Olive. Probably a good take from Brandon Garcia. He didn't want that, 2-0. -oh. Two strikes, maybe he'll have to put the medal to that ball but right now content just to watch it go by and get set for another one. O'Kelly McWilliams on deck for Lynchburg, looking to keep a hit streak of his own alive. Here's the pitch, ball in the dirt, good sprawl and stop from Hunter Holman, but it is a ball, and now it's a hitter's count again for Hollywood, 3-1. McWilliams has a nine-game hitting streak that is in jeopardy at the moment. Here's the pitch from Olive. Looks to be right down Main Street. Garcia didn't want it, and he'll hit with a full count now. Two outs. Runners on the move again on the pitch. As the runner at second, you got to watch what they call the inside move. That would be the pitcher picking the leg up and then spinning back in a clockwise motion in your direction. Olive will pitch. Runners go. Low it in, and it's ball four. Quality at bat there from Brandon Garcia because he had two pitches he could have swung at easily, but that's the discipline. That's the, the, the hitting zone awareness, not the strike zone awareness. Garcia probably knew those balls were strikes, but it's the awareness of what he wants and the discipline to wait to get what he wants. Lays off of that and takes a walk. Now the bases are loaded. Here's Ivy. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth. He'll take strike one. McWilliams does have a walk today. That extends his reached base streak. He's been on in 20 straight now. 20 of 21 for O'Kelly McWilliams. Looking to extend the hit streak, though, and that would score some runs. Swing and a miss. And it's an 0-2 count pretty quickly. 
from Paul Olive. Olive started this seventh inning, got Gavin Collins to fly out. Riley O'Donovan struck out, but then it was a hit by pitch and back-to-back -back walks to load the bases. This could be one of those two-out rallies. Wind up from Olive. That one was nowhere close. And give Holman credit for sliding over there to keep that one from going to the backstop. Logan Webster, good speed at third. He would probably score on any passed ball wild pitch scenario. 1-2. Holman had a little trouble getting a sign from the dugout, it seemed like, but now he's delivered it. Olive is ready. Mick Williams will yank it through the hole. One run is in. Munitz turning around third. No play at home to get him, and two do come across. The hit streak is alive for O'Kelly McWilliams, and Lynchburg's chances have just gotten better. It's an 8-5 ball game. Two out, two RBI single from O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth. And here comes Benny Bombs. Talk about a game-changing kind of athlete. Benny Bombs is it. He could do it with one swing of the bat, and that could be a long ball or it could just be a base hit. Good wheels at second base with Brandon Garcia there. McWilliams behind him. Another mound visit coming up for Methodist, and that means a pitching change. Second one of the inning, and it's the head coach, Tom Austin, walking out to get the ball from Olive. We'll pause and identify the new arm in just a second, but the rally is on for the Hornets in the bottom of the seventh inning at Fox Field. New pitcher for Methodist on the bump is Anthony Miali, a junior from Harrisburg, North Carolina. This will be appearance number three of the season. First one was pretty good. Second one on February 10th, or excuse me, March 10th against Piedmont, not as good. But hold that thought, because here comes the first pitch to Ben Jones. Swinging it with runners on first and second. He'll take strike one, just above the knee, outer half. There's two outs. Brandon Garcia at second, O'Kelly McWilliams at first. IV over there at first just drove in two with a two out single through the left side of the infield. Lynchburg looking for more, trailing by three, down, but definitely not out. Definitely not when Ben Jones is swinging the bat. He'll pull it into right field. Brandon Garcia will turn and burn around third base. He steps on the plate for another run, and now Lynchburg is within two with runners at the corners. Call it a three-hit day for Ben Jones. 
you just knew he was going to bust out. You knew he was going to have a multi-hit game. And you know the power's coming from Ben Jones, too. But for now, the single does the job. Scoring his high school teammate, Brandon Garcia. McWilliams moves up to third. It's runners at the corners for Lynchburg with the dangerous Eric Hyatt up. One for two with two walks so far today for Eric Hyatt. Lynchburg's really starting to bang it now. Bats have gotten hotter and hotter as this game went on. Or this has this game has gone on, I guess you could say. 1-0 count for Hyatt. Jones a threat to run. And now you're back to a two-run deficit, so your running game is back on. We had that conversation about how when you're down five or six, you have to be a bit more conservative. It's probably out the window now. And there definitely would be value in getting Jones, who is the tying run, into scoring position. 1-1 one, one count as Hyatt does not offer at an away fastball. Classic Lynchburg inning, though. It's featured a hit by pitch, two walks, and now back-to-back -back singles to plate runs. Nice overhand 12-6 curveball, but that's a ball. Good job by Eric Hyatt to see it. First time seeing Miali as well. Quinn Madden on deck. His hit streak is alive. Alive and well at 11 straight for Quinn Madden. 2-1 count to Eric Hyatt. The righty waits patiently. Here's the pitch. Spiked and blocked effectively by Hunter Holman. Still impressed by Hunter Holman. He's been sharp. He had that little sequence there where balls seemed to be jumping out of his mitt. But he actually threw out Ben Jones on one of those. And, and overall, I think Hunter Holman's been really solid behind the dish for the Monarchs. Ten hits. Ben Jones has three of them. Eric Hyatt has one. Second one would be big right here. 3-1 count. Doesn't need to offer it that one. It's another walk for Eric Hyatt. He's taken three of those today. And now on the season, Eric Hyatt is over the 20-walk mark now. He's at the 20-walk mark. Eric Hyatt, another guy who the batting average does not tell nearly the whole story. The average coming into the game for Eric Hyatt was 283, but the on-base percentage almost 200 points higher. So that tells you he takes the walks. Eric Hyatt has also been hit four times this season as well. That factors into the OBP. Quinn Madden getting a short conversation with third base coach Oscar Garcia. Great shot there at OG. We haven't talked about OG enough this season. There's so many storylines and so many things to talk about that you can't talk about everybody. We should be talking about Oscar Garcia more. Such a big, big part of this coaching staff. And one of the most likable guys you will ever meet in your life. Time out on the field as Tom Austin's going to take a chat now. The game is sort of ground down to a halt. We had a pitching change that got Miali in there. He's faced two. He surrendered a single to Ben Jones. Walked Eric Hyatt. Might be time for a new arm for Methodist. Tom Austin's actually going to take him off the mound to the dirt. Well, that's interesting. It's a very subtle thing, but could, I don't know if you could see the way Coach Austin just sort of gestured, hey, let's talk over here instead. And this is coming after a short offensive timeout from Coach Oscar Garcia and Quinn Madden. It will be a new pitcher. The home plate umpire has beckoned the new pitcher from the bullpen on. So we will get a new arm. Oh, let's just keep it right here. And this is the time when we should be talking about Coach Oscar Garcia or any other side notes that don't really pertain necessarily to the game at hand. But yeah, OG, really big part of the hitting plan here at Lynchburg. And that includes the in-game hitting plan, but then also the work that takes place in practice. Such a personality guy. He seems to connect with every player, and he seems to understand what motivates different guys. And that's so key in coaching. Those master coaches can do that so well. And in the modern game, you have to be aware that, that each guy is not a robot. Each, you don't want clones. You want guys to have their own unique personalities and styles. I think Coach Oscar Garcia embraces that. He played his college baseball at Concord. University in West Virginia, and he's loved his time here on campus at the University of Lynchburg, a big, big part of the success here for the Hornets. 
And that's not just offensively, because OG does great work with the defensive side of things as well. But a very valuable piece, his brother Gabe Garcia, also on the coaching staff. Gabe Garcia was the, was the new man last year, but now that's grad assistant Cameron Lane transitioning from his outstanding playing career to being an assistant coach. And you see Cam Lane coaching first base, handing out the gummy bears. Cam Lane is proud of the gummy bears. It seems like in years past, it might have been Skittles or some other sort of sweet candy. But Cam Lane has favored gummy bears this year. He said there's a chance it could switch over to gummy worms at some point. That's the inside hard-hitting analysis that you are only going to get on LHSN. You're not going to get that kind of insight anywhere else. All right, just a mound visit. It's over. We're back to baseball. A fast-moving game slowed down there, but we are back. Quinn Madden swings on one and fouls it off. It's an 0-1 count. Bases are loaded here for Quinn Madden. Fastball hits the edge. Nice, sharp pitch. Uh, had some life on it. Sort of a herky-jerky motion as well. Might be tough to hit. Wind-up situation again for a Methodist pitcher. They all seem to favor that with runners on third. Here's the 0-2. Good stop once again from Hunter Holman. Kept that right in front of him. You've got O'Kelly McWilliams at third. Ben Jones is at second. And it's Eric Hyatt at first for Lynchburg. The bases are loaded. There's ducks on the pond for Quinn Madden. Here comes a 1-2 delivery. Got a piece of it. Fought it off nicely. We'll try again here with one ball and two strikes. Gavin Collins on deck. I was hoping Gavin Collins would get another at bat. To try to extend his hitting streak. Seems like he will. Quinn Madden's hitting streak is up to 11 games in a row now. That factors a single earlier in this one. Here's the 1-2. Madden lifts another one foul. Should be foul. Monarch defenders ran over in anticipation of a play, but it did float out of the field there. And it's just a foul ball. Quinn Madden talked about the secret apple juice and deer sticks. Maybe it shouldn't be ducks on the pond. Maybe it should be uh, deers in, in sight. Deers on the target, possibly. Oh, how about it? How about it, Quinn Madden? Into the outfield. Oh, Kelly McWilliams scores. Ben Jones scores to tie up the game. They're going to send Eric Hyatt home. We've got to play. Hyatt gets around it with a head first slide. Catcher bobbled it. Can they get Madden at third? No. He slides in safely, rips off the helmet. He is pumped. How about Quinn Madden doing it again, driving in three for the Hornets, who now lead. My goodness, what a turn of events. Methodist had their big inning in the fourth. Lynchburg is having theirs in the bottom of the seventh. A bases clearing triple for Quinn Madden. He's driven in four. He's been doing it the last month. Quinn Madden does it again. 9-8 Lynchburg on top. What a team. What an offense. They just grind you down. Remember, Lynchburg has also taken three walks in this inning. Three walks to go with back-to-back -back singles from McWilliams and Jones. Hyatt then walked. Gavin Collins wanted to really put the game out of reach right there with that swing, didn't he? Wouldn't completely put the game out of reach, but it would give Lynchburg a big advantage. Collins could park one. 0-2 count. Hitting approach might change here for number 15, Gavin Collins. Quinn Madden, multi-hits now. Hang on, hang on to that. Let's watch this 0-2 pitch first. Here it comes. Good slide again from Hunter Holman. So for Quinn Madden, it's multiple hits in a game now in nine of his last ten. He is on an absolute heater. No seams left on the baseball when Quinn Madden gets done with it. Collins drills this to deep right center field. This is going to be a tough play. Long run out there, and the catch is made in center field by Austin Renzel. Renzel made a great catch to save runs earlier in the game, and that one surely saved a run. Collins got good metal on this, but here's another look at the three-run triple. Slight bobble there. Right fielder actually played it well on the backup. But Lynchburg was running the bases hard. They hustle in. Hyatt slides in safely. He's pumped. And Lynchburg now on top, 9-8 to eight after a monster seventh inning at Fox Field.
Six runs in the inning for Lynchburg. A six-run seventh. And it came on three hits, but it's a classic Lynchburg inning because it also featured three walks. Logan Webster got hit by a pitch in there as well. And the Hornets not only erase the deficit, they take the lead. Lynchburg now on top for the first time in this game, 9-8. 9-8 advantage right now for Lynchburg. Trevor Loving is in to play first base for the Hornets. Should be in that spot. Originally occupied by Ryan Long and then Joe Munitz, who was in that inning, walked in that inning. Joe Munitz walked and came around to score. Now it's Trevor Loving, sophomore from Mechanicsville, Virginia, over there playing first base for Lynchburg. 1-1 one, one count on the center fielder, Austin Renzel, who's made a couple nice plays to save runs in this game for Methodist. But right now the Monarchs, playing from behind for the first time. Methodist scored one in the top of the first. Lynchburg ties it with one in the bottom of the second. Then it was the sixth spot in the fourth inning for the Monarchs. Jumped out to the lead. Lynchburg gets one in the fifth, one in the sixth to, to stay within arm's length, and then you get the big inning. And that is why you peck away. How about that for a punch out right there? That is big time. Froze Austin Renzel, and we've already said now Methodist hitters are not easy to strike out. Just a fourth K of the ball game for Methodist. And Trent Judd with a punch out there. Trent Judd still out there working. And Sean Pokorok is also wearing the gear behind the plate. So a couple defensive changes. Pokey's probably in that spot for Riley O'Donovan, we would think. Although it could, could be a change in the batting order. We'll wait and see when the Hornets come up in the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be an insurance situation for Lynchburg. Looking to add on to this one-run lead at the moment. Lynchburg typically, when I say typically, I mean this year and years past, so good in the one-run situations. Last year, Lynchburg was 8-2 and two in one-run games. This year, 4-2 and two in one-run games. Lynchburg... This season in games decided by four or less is nine and two. The old one swing of the bat game. It's more than a light rain because you can hear it. You can actually hear the rain on our crowd mic out there. Two, two count for Trent Judd. Buzz the tower there on Jackson Deal as he had to move out of the way. Deal is three for four. He's having a great game. Ben Jones has three hits for Lynchburg. Hunter Holman who's on deck. Hit a three-run home run for Methodist. Swing and a miss as Trent Judd is feeling it out there right now. He just struck out a guy that's three now for four. Back-to-back -back punch outs for Trent Judd. And by the way, he struck out three of his last four. He'll hand the ball off, and he should get a standing O from his teammates. He deserves it. Great work by Trent Judd. We'll meet the new Lynchburg arm in just a moment right here on LHSN. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interaction with the faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. I think a private education is too expensive. Bryce Demery is on the bump for Lynchburg in a one-run game, 9-8. Hornets on top. 
Bryce Demery in relief of Trent Judd, who was outstanding. Exactly two innings for Judd. He came in in the sixth inning, got the final out there. Trent Judd struck out three of four. Uh, that's the kind of performance that as a young guy, Trent Judd, a sophomore, and maybe even we should say as an older guy, maybe a junior or senior, have that kind of performance can get you more innings. Gets the confidence up from the coaching staff. Should get Trent Judd's confidence up as well. Against a good team, again, against a quality opponent that has not been striking out. Trent Judd struck out three of four. There was a fly out to right sandwiched in there. Oh, one count for Bryce Demery. But Trent Judd struck out three of four hitters. Uh, and Methodist has only struck out five times as a team. So Judd has three of the five. Electric stuff out there for Trent Judd. Speaking of electric, Bryce Demery, 0-2 on Hunter Holman with two outs. Here's the pitch from Demery. Got him right down the middle with a hard heater. Bryce Demery is pumped, and why wouldn't he be? Securing a one-run advantage for his team as Lynchburg looks for some insurance in the bottom of the eighth inning. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Lynchburg looking for win number 13 on the season. They are taking on a tough Monarch squad, a game and ready Methodist squad. Methodist has been ready from the jump, and that's not always easy when you have to take the long road trip. Not a super long road trip from Fayetteville, North Carolina, as I make points and then contradict myself. It's like I give the counterpoint to my point in the same breath. But um, I like what this Methodist team has done. Don't count them out, Lynchburg would do well to get an insurance run or two here in the bottom of the eighth inning. It is Sean Pokerock hitting in the spot that was originally occupied by catcher Riley O'Donovan. Riley had a good day at two for four, and now it's Pokey's turn to put the pads on and swing the bat. Sean Pokerock was in there catching in the top of the eighth inning. And Bryce Demery coming in, slamming the door with a, a three-pitch strikeout. That's the old good morning, good afternoon, good night strikeout. Just three needed from Bryce Demery. BDTO, Bryce Demery takeover. Again, see if he comes back out for the ninth, or maybe it was a one and done against the lefty Hunter Holman. Poker Rock fouls one off. And now the count is two balls and two strikes. Banks Hartman, freshman, will lead off in the ninth inning for Methodist. Pokey stays alive on a sweeping breaking ball. And we'll try a 2-2 delivery again. Lynchburg is in action tomorrow. Maybe you can make the trip to Hampton, Sydney to see the Tigers and the Hornets. Lynchburg also on the road this weekend at EMU. We're back at home next Wednesday, week from tomorrow, as Randolph-Macon will come to town here at Fox. Always a great game between Macon and Lynchburg. Rivalry kind of stuff. And we are really looking forward to that one. Sean Pokerock off the grip there to stay alive and get another two-strike delivery. Full count. And there you go. You know it's a long at bat when the umpire has to go get more baseballs. 9-8 ball game. Lynchburg has 11 hits. 
They left 12 on base, but you knew that was going to pay off. You knew that was going to be fruitful. Before that big inning, uh, Pokey got a piece of that, but the catcher held on, so that's a strikeout. Uh, you knew Lynchburg, now batting number the six, Logan Webster. getting runners on is, is just so key. I've always said the teams that score more runs are going to leave more runners on, so sometimes the left on base stats are misleading. But probably still worth giving. That's just kind of the traditional baseball thing, the old school thing. You'd end every half inning with the runs, hits, errors, and left on base. So it is an important stat. I mean, you want to get them in, but I, I just think those teams that score more runs, they just get more runners on, so they're going to leave a few more on, on average. Logan Webster will watch one skip out of the catcher's mitt. Now it's a 3-0 count. Webster is officially 0 for 0 so far, a walk and a hit by pitch. Logan Webster has a hit streak, eight-game hit streak coming into this game. 3-0 count, see if he gets a chance. Yeah, bat got off the shoulder but didn't swing at a 3-0 offering, and now the count is three balls and one strike. Webster drills this into right center field. Long run for either outfielder, but the grab is made by Jackson Deal. So it would appear that Logan Webster's hit streak is on hold. And this is Trevor Loving now. Now batting number 36. He came Trevor in to play Loving. first base. Ryan Long started in this spot. Joe Munitz came in. Trevor Loving on to play first base last inning. And now Trevor Loving swinging the bat. The sophomore from Mechanicsville, Virginia on the season is one for two. Hitting 500, he got that one hit at Pfeiffer a couple weeks ago. Pfeiffer, another USA South Conference team like Methodist. Lynchburg also played Greensboro from the USA South. So Methodist has quite, got quite a few games against ODAC teams. Randolph-Macon last week, Monarchs lost that one. Lynchburg this week, and then Roanoke next week. So Methodist is getting Three really quality teams from the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Monarchs might have Guilford on the schedule as well. One, two count on Trevor Loving. With two outs, Brandon Garcia on deck. Garcia, the reigning ODAC player of the week. Loving got a piece of that, fouled it into the body of the catcher. And we'll have a one, two offering coming up again. Bryce Demery. Got the final out of the eighth inning. The three-pitch strikeout on Hunter Holman. Lynchburg has used five pitchers now. Josh Jorman started it. Dominic Rollins came in. Sam Allheight for two batters. Then Trent Judd for exactly two innings. That one just barely grazed the jersey of Trevor Loving. So he's on with a hit by pitch. Fourth batter that Methodist has hit today. So the free base runner check looks pretty good for Lynchburg. They've taken eight walks, well over their season average of 5.6, and they've been hit four times, which is over their season average of 2.14. Oh, and don't forget, they've banged out 11 base hits. Lynchburg really swinging it great last month or so. Public enemy number one for other teams has probably been this guy, Brandon Garcia. ODAC player of the week, went six for 11. He walked five times, two hit by pitch, scored nine times, drove in five, added three stolen bases in there. Change up at the knees, nice pitch. Garcia could just watch that one. And now it's an 0-2 count for Brandon Garcia today. Two for three with two walks. Everything you want from a leadoff man. And he plays an outstanding shortstop as well. And then on top of that, he just does it again and again and again. One of those guys that is so consistent. Every game, it seems like. And if he doesn't do it every game, if he has one bad game, he's going to bounce back pretty quickly. One-two count for Brandon Garcia, hitting with Trevor Loving on first base in the bottom of the eighth. Garcia will slice this one to his shortstop counterpart. Underhand flip to second base, and that is... The final out of the inning. So here we go. Lynchburg looks to win another one-run game on top. Nine to eight heading to the ninth inning. Don't miss the conclusion on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Ninth inning in a one-run ball game. Lynchburg looks to hold on. It is Bryce Demery on the mound. Left-hander Banks Hartman starts, so it could be left-on-left -left matchup, and then Lynchburg possibly going another direction, but we'll just wait and see. Uh, I don't see any reason to take the ball from Bryce Demery yet, just with that first batter performance. Three strikes. Demery going right after the talented Hunter Holman, who homered earlier in this game. Let's see if Demery does the same thing to Hartman. Yep, strike one right there. We are in the ninth inning, 9-8 ball game. Bryce Demery is on for what I believe would be his first career save. He's finally thrown a ball in this appearance, though. 1-1 one, one count to Banks Hartman. Hartman is 0 for 2. He's got two sacrifice bunts executed successfully in this one. Demery nips the outside edge with strike two. Hartman confirming with the umpire. We're in the top of the ninth inning here in a one-run ball game. Lynchburg looking for win number 13 on the season. They're 12 and six currently. They've won three in a row, eight of their last 10. Demery missed the zone there. Seemed like he had an issue with the footing. We have had rain basically from about the fifth inning on in this game. It started as a light rain. It befuddled me because I thought it wasn't supposed to rain today, but you know the weather in central Virginia. It's unpredictable. So if you don't like the weather, just wait a little bit, and it'll, it will change. Ball three from Bryce Demery. Full count. It will be Caleb Rogers on deck. He's hitless on the day. Methodist has eight runs on seven hits. Demery set, looks in, now fires. Bouncing ball, right side. Loving is there. He'll flip to Demery covering, and they got it. Great play defensively for Lynchburg. And don't forget, fans, as Bryce Demery is going to come out. Nice job there by Demery, just pitching-wise and on the coverage. Don't forget, that's two guys that have not had a lot of field time in the games right there. Trevor Loving coming off to make the catch and then flip it to Bryce Demery. Great toss. Right there, chest height. Demery gets rid of it quick to throw it, let the infield throw it around. And, and it's back to that PFP play, that pitcher's fielding practice that you rep over and over and over again. But for those guys like Loving and Demery, they may not have had as many reps as everybody else. So to execute that play under some pressure in a one-run ball game, I think that's outstanding. And those guys should deserve high marks. It may look like a routine play. And, and in some cases, it is. But just given the situation, I think it's A-plus stuff. All right, our new pitcher, the mighty Mack, return of the Mack. It's Nathaniel Mack. We saw Nathaniel Mack pitching against Washington and Lee. He had some electric stuff. Mack got a big strikeout to end an inning against Washington and Lee. Had a nice little underhanded fist pump. It was like a, it was like a gut shot kind of a fist pump. Yeah, it came up from down low. It wasn't the fist pump out in front like a right cross. It was like a almost, a almost an uppercut kind of a fist pump from Nathaniel Mack. As we now break down the mechanics of not only the pitching itself, but the, the celebration and the fist pump from Nathaniel Mack. On the season, the numbers for the mighty Mack, pretty good, 2-0. and oh. This will be appearance number seven, 3.52 earned run average. He struck out seven. He's only walked three in seven and two thirds innings. No saves for Nathaniel Mack. 
So he could change that potentially here. He will enter with one out in the top of the ninth. Nobody on facing Caleb Rogers. Here's a good stat for you. Caleb Rogers, this is plate appearance number five. He's faced four different pitchers. Caleb Rogers faced Jorman twice, then Dominic Rollins, then Trent Judd, and now the Nathaniel Matt. Hard to get comfortable as a pitcher, or a hitter rather, when you're getting different looks all the time. First pitch from Mack, sweeper, ball one. Caleb Rogers from Seminole, Florida, the shortstop. He's been solid out there today. He does have one walk. Does have an RBI as well, ground out RBI in the first inning. There's a better breaking ball from Nathaniel Mack, better location anyway, and it evens the count up at one ball and one strike. Mack set, ready. Whoa, that one went over the top of Caleb Rogers. And you could see he was a little frustrated thinking I should have just let that ball hit me. Rogers does represent the tying run in this 9-8 ball game. Lynchburg, of course, the home team would get a chance to answer in the bottom of the ninth. That happened against Washington and Lee in game two on Sunday. Lynchburg led going into the ninth. They trailed after the Generals got a bases clearing double from Campbell Charneco, but then Lynchburg comes back for the walk-off win in the bottom of the ninth. If you're a Hornet fan, you're hoping that's not needed in this one. 2-2 Two -two count. Mack fires it in there. Ground ball up the middle. There's the ODAC player of the week, Brandon Garcia. Ooh, the throw is high. Kicked off the glove of Trevor Loving, and it went out of play. It'll be an extra base on the high throw that skips out of play. And now the tying run is in scoring position. Thought it was a good pitch from Nathaniel Mack. This is not an easy play to make up the middle on the move. Additionally, there might be a wet baseball there. We talked about the rain. 2-2 two, two count, or excuse me, not a 2-2 two, two count. It's a fresh count now to Brandon Malgert, the second baseman. He's walked three straight plate appearances. Only thing he's done other than walk is ground out to the shortstop. One out, top of the ninth. Tying run at second. Go ahead, run in the batter's box for Methodist. Strike one from Nathaniel Mack. He seems to be confident. He seems to be willing to step up in this moment right here. Mack's looking good again. 0-1 oh, count. Corners are in for Lynchburg. Ground ball to one of those corners. That's Gavin Collins. Steps and throws. Whistles it across the grass for out number two. Good, calm, confident look there from Gavin Collins. Check the runner. Was in no hurry. Now batting number and six, makes the out in time. Engel. Banks Engel represents the last chance for Methodist, who trails by one. 9-8. Engel's got a double. He struck out twice and a sack bunt. On the card today. Outfield, regular depth. They've got angles slightly to pull. He'll hit this ball the other way and foul. Fouled into the hill in between Fox Field and Wake Field House to our right. A one count. I think the outfield's actually got angles shaded the other way. They were sort of moving on the pitch, trying to get sta stationed. Caleb Green is on deck for Methodist. Infield is now back. Corners are back. Not expecting any bunting going on now from Methodist. Runner will go. Ball in the dirt. Poker Rock blocks it. Even on a good pitch, I'm not sure that Pokey would have had a chance to throw that runner out. He got a great jump at second. Back to that Methodist small ball game. They run the bases to perfection. Now the tying runs just 90 feet away. So there is a bit more pressure on the catcher and pitcher combo. Can't allow a pass ball or a wild pitch. Corners come back in for Lynchburg, guarding against a potential base hit bunt with two outs and a runner on third. Sweeping breaking ball from Nathaniel Mack, misses the zone, and now it's a 2-1 count. If Lynchburg needs to hit in the bottom of the ninth, it'll be O'Kelly McWilliams leading it off. Low target away from Sean Pokorok. Mack set, ready, fires. Breaking ball for a strike. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Might be the biggest pitch of the game right here. So much great stuff already in a baseball game. Crazy that it can all boil down to one pitch. But this is it right here, or could be anyway. Nathaniel Mack 
set at the waist. Fires in, breaking ball low and away. Good hold from Banks Engel, the hitter. Did not offer it that one. Now the count is full. Corner infielders back up to the normal depth. We'll try it again, full count. Matt gonna go breaking ball or maybe fastball this time. Longer hold, kicks in. It was a, I think the slider again that Engel gets a piece of and fouls it to the right. Ninth inning tension time again. So many close games for Lynchburg. Even last year, we win a national championship, but there was just a ton of close games. Very few blowouts. It's a one run game again. Let's see if the Hornets can hold it right here. Ready, aim, fire for Nathaniel Mack. Ball fouled off of Ingles foot. Man, Mack got that in a good spot. The handcuff pitch right there and somehow Engel just broke free of the shackles and got a piece of that one. So it's a full count delivery coming up once again. And what has turned into a very long at bat. It just builds the tension even more, doesn't it? If you're Engel and Mack, you gotta try to stay loose. See if Nathaniel Mack is loose on this one. Breaking ball, airborne again. Will that stay in play? Hard sprint from Ben Jones and Quinn Madden. Trevor Loving was down the line from his first base spot, but it's another foul ball. I can hardly stand it at this point. It's almost too much, but we'll get another full count pitch coming. This is a great battle. This is the heart and soul of our game right here. One run ball game, and you got two guys who just refuse to give up. Nathaniel Mack is set, deep breath, looks in. Breaking ball again that Ingle will get a piece of. My goodness. This is what you work hard for right here. And again, the key, if possible, is to try to stay relaxed. Easy to say when you're in the third person, when you're an innocent bystander up here. Really easy to say, oh, just relax and have fun. Really tough out there on the diamond. Mack on top of the hill again. He'll try to get another one by Banks Ingle. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, and he got him. What a battle that Nathaniel Mack wins. Lynchburg, a 9-8 victory over Methodist. Hornets have to come back. They get the six runs in the seventh inning. Some great pitching from Trent Judd, Bryce Demery, and then Nathaniel Mack comes on to get a big punch out to end it. Lynchburg moves to 13-6 on the season. 7-3 at Fox Field. Hornets have now won three in a row. They've won nine of their last 11. Methodist falls to 12 and 11. Man, what a ball game. Everything you want from a midweek non-conference game. And then some, two hits from Brandon Garcia. Three hits from Ben Jones. Quinn Madden continues his hitting streak. He had a bases clearing triple in that big seventh run, or excuse me, that big six run seventh inning. Tough luck for Methodist. They'll try to regroup. They take on Mary Baldwin this weekend. Lynchburg back in action in less than 24 hours. They'll get on the bus and go to Farmville and take on the Hampton Sydney Tigers in an ODAC game. Hope you can check that out. Lynchburg's on the road Saturday as well against EMU. So our next LHSN baseball broadcast will be next Wednesday. It'll be a week from tomorrow. That is April 3rd when Lynchburg will host Randolph-Macon. Big thank you to our LHSN crew. We had a blast up here today. Thank you for watching and listening and putting up with us, and hopefully you enjoyed some of this great action as well. We'll talk to you again soon, baseball fans. Lynchburg wins it 9-8. They beat Methodist to improve to 13-6 on the season.